I'm George. And I'm Bob. We're the Shipping Goblins from Beetle and Grips. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing Map Vault Collection. And with the Map Vault Collection, you get a bunch of gorgeous two-sided maps, all scaled for standard minis. Yeah, get yours now for the Map Vault Collection from Beetle and Grimm, and all the players at your table will be revved up and hyper because the only thing they'll be able to say is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do it. Zorg! Oh, do it again. Zorg! <laughs> Oh, oh. oh you think you are? Oh, yes, Mr. Lillard. You're just oh. some yes, sir. You oh. just go we, off it's your thing. Oh, com right completely. We just thought. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna take this right to yes, Beetle. Pink room. Thank you, sir. What happened? Uh, Matthew Lillard watches our show! Our <laughs> And here, we, we, we're here, we made it. It's Monday night. This is a brand new night for us. Um, hello, hello you. Uh, welcome hello, hello, to hello. Uh, Ben. Hello, hello Steve, you all right? Hello, <laughs> yeah. I'm all right, hello. yes. Oh, hello, yeah. oh, people started talking now, look. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, welcome to, um, welcome to uh, Band of Badgers. It's Monday, not Thursday uh, or Friday, um, but Monday, mm. this is our, our brand new show. This is the, the great British brush off, as we're lovingly referring to it, or just, the brush off, um, as we put our three DMs, which is myself, Steve, and Joe, as you probably know, uh, put through the painting trials um, by our wonderful uh, special guest artist, V Muse. Hello, V. How are you? Hello. Hello. Good thing to I've got different screens. Hello. I've got different screens. Um, <laughs> so, and, and of course, we have, uh, you may also recognize uh, Josh McGuire from the McGuire Review. He is our guest guest. Hello, everybody. Just to uh, just to kind of uh, help things go along, really, just to wind us up and g us on and, and everything that yeah. Josh does does best. But um, I am not your GM for this evening. I am actually your host. So uh, hello to to everyone. Hello to you for watching. We are live um, on Twitch now. Here's a few things. This is a new kind of layout for us. Uh, again, if you're watching on Twitch. Right next to me, hold on, which which way? That way, there yeah, is a big box. And in that box is what we're painting today, right now. Um, we have about an hour and a half to two hours, maybe. We'll see how it goes. But we are painting the uh, Pezo uh, Iconic Goblins, okay? So from WizKids, of course. So we are literally gonna rip these open now and start painting these. So if you want to paint along, in this box will be a list of colors. If you haven't seen our social posts, um, jot down those colours, find them, get your painting gear ready, and join us in. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's fine. At least you can pause it. That's that's pretty good. So give it a go. Uh, I hope you uh, and and send in your stuff to us on Twitter or Facebook at RPG Badgers. So uh, please do that. <sighs> what else have we got? Oh, thank you uh, to Billy Grimms, our sponsor for our entire channel. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Oh, always mm. always a pleasure. And thank you, of course, to WizKids. Uh, and V for for supplying all of these minis for this kind of special series that we're doing. Awesome, um, uh, really, really good. Really yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's so very, very, very generous. <laughs> um, we are gonna be, we're going to be painting uh, loads of these over the mm -hmm. next few episodes. So do stay tuned for those. Uh, it's every other week for a few weeks, and we'll see how it goes. Now. So in that box next to me, there's a box below it. You'll find loads of uh, of our supporters and friends of Band of Badgers uh, who have put in discounts from their businesses to you. And it could be from anything from 10 to 20% off of their products. So do please check it out. Do use them. Do let them know that uh, it was us who sent them, sent them your way. Um, if you want to support us in return, you can. Um, we're on Twitch, so if you're watching us live, we have our Twitch uh, channel Prime subs. I don't know how to do it. Hopefully you do. If not, Steve knows <laughs> Steve's kids can do it for you. Um, yeah. Just check out our Star Finder. It goes live on YouTube tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Who is that? Lost son. Thank you, Lost son. Yeah, thank you. Send um, Steve's kids over to do that for you. <laughs> yeah. that's Actually, some good time travel you got there yeah, yeah, and he leaves on the road. it's pretty good 
Um, now, also, as well as this is our, our first new show, we've got Thursday, Rune Lords is back, of course, our weekly uh, Pathfinder uh, campaign. Friday, Tomb of Annihilation is back, that's our fortnightly campaign from D&D. And, of course, next Friday, the final part of our Starfinder, Steel Talon's Lair, will be out. So, now all that is away, um, I just... Before we kind of dig into everything uh, with everyone here, I just want to do a quick shout out to uh, everyone who's joining us at the moment. Who have we got? Uh, Sean TW, thank you very much for Sean. Sean has done uh, loads of artwork and cartoons for mm. us in the past. The painted badger that you see in our live frame. So good. He did that. He's done loads Great. of cartoons for us. Ah. He's actually painting um, the badger warrior that we got to the badger barbarian. <laughs> um, so. Please do check out his uh, his website. He'll be in the box below. He does character portraits. It's fantastic. Um, Gallant Goblin, thank you for joining us again. Um, again, it's not Thursday. It's not Friday. It's a Monday. Something different for us. Um, we'll see how all this works out. A Monday night might be a completely different audience. So we'll, we'll see mm -hmm. what, what happens. Uh, Abyssal, uh, thank you for joining us. Bing Cortana. If we say that out loud, is everyone's phones just kind of... I was just going to say, be careful <laughs> throwing that name around. Yeah. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, don't even, like, don't even touch Alexa. Good Lord. <laughs> not, that, not that's, like, name. forbidden at my house. We had the creepy laugh version. I'm like, nope, you're done. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, sitting at your house at one o'clock in the morning, and you're, <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> you're unplugged. <laughs> yep. Never wow. to be plugged in again. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, who else have we got? We've got um uh oh Steve. Oh no, there you are. Um Bing Cortana, Night the Night Lady, let's do this, host raffle. Mr. Chelly, Mr. Chelly is back. Uh Mr. Chelly's been on for been, been a few episodes now. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Yeah. Chelly. Yeah. Uh Nevermore. Nevermore. Hi uh Mike, how you doing? How was the so on screen right now is Dogmite on our discounts. Noble More, during our Christmas special, won um, a Dogmite $300 GM screen. And it turned yeah. up earlier in the week and he sent me photos. It looks mm -hmm. amazing, Mike. Uh, he actually paid extra to have it upgraded so it got even more, more bling on it. So well done there. Uh, the Crafted Muse is, of course, V. Thank you for joining us. And Zombies Ate My Brain. Um, zombies, thank you for joining us. You, you've been a, a, quite a regular, so that's good to see you. So, what's the plan, V? What are we doing? Uh, the plan is today I'm getting you guys started on the very basics of mini painting, because uh, from our discussions, some of you have maybe tried a sort of, some of you have never ever, and uh, since we're trying to do this where we're getting uh, three little gobos all done at the same time, what we're gonna do is do something called the base layer of color colors, and then look into doing a wash to help bring out some of the details. So we have a Oh, we're getting. She, she can. Your audio is gone. Your audio is gone, V. Hello. Why? No, it's back now. Uh, it, it's very, back. Very you're, quiet, it says you're very, very quiet. I'm very, very. That's not me. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> How's that better? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, basically, it's uh, it's just we're going to learn how to get the paint onto the minis. And then how you can take the paint that's on the minis look a little bit better with a wash is sort of the game plan for this week. just to get you into the basics that sounds good to you cool yep yes yes it does all right steve so you might have to mute because your yeah. birdie is is chirping louder than v <laughs> <laughs> being outdone by a bird i don't know <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the classic goblins from our Pathfinder Battles Deep Cuts. And uh, if you need a SKU number, you can find it right there. It is 72579 for that packet. And you get these three fantastic goblins. I already have them up on my um, easy-to-do mini holders. But I do, it's basically just take empty pill bottles, fill them up with salt, sand, even rice, and then use blue tack to stick them on top. But this is the variety you have. So they're fun little guys. And we're going to start off first by basically getting the skin on, the skin color. So we're going to be doing a, uh, I'm using Vallejo paints. So I'll be using the Vallejo names as I go along, but I'll be describing mm -hmm. the color for you. So what I'm going to be using 
for my paints, for my goblins, it is called Goblin Green. And it's basically a nice mid-tone green with a yellowish tone to it. So if you are at home and you don't have these particular colors, what you can always do is take your classic Kelly green, like just a classic green, and add in a little bit of yellow and mix it to start getting a more yellow tinted green like what you see here. If you have this color at home, this is the name and the code and everything for Vallejo. And if you have other paints, then a comparable yellowish mid-tone green, something with a warmer green, not a cooler green. Cooler means it drifts more into blues. So that is what we're going to start with. And what we're going to do is get the skin color addressed first, because when you paint minis, you sort of start, um, think about like when you get dressed in the morning, you deal with your skin first and you put on. Oh, oh, Jesus. Z, Sorry, we've now lost you. We've now lost your sound completely. <clears throat> Might need to be, uh, we will endeavor to continue with green. Can we? Bust open these packs. Yeah, can we do the official oh, yeah. Let's do the, uh, the official, official break unboxing. open of the package? <laughs> okay, am I back? Yeah, now you're back. Now I'm back. I don't know why. It might just be because of the... Uh, it might be gating out if it's too loud now. Okay, so we're going to start with getting those lovelies out. And if you have... I use Everybody going? Like, yeah, right. yep, rip. Go for rip. It. rip. I'm not precious about the boxes. Okay, and while, while everybody's doing that, while everybody's doing that, I'll catch up. Let me let me tease a little bit. Go, okay, please. so we're we're gonna do um, because this is kind of the the kickoff of the first time with the great British brush off. We're gonna do a giveaway on this one as well for one of the Pathfinder battles. This is the brand new Darklands Rising, which is not technically out yet. V, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like an early February release. February 3rd for, is the target date. Yep. Okay, so February, early February release on, on this. We're gonna give away one of these boosters and I have a number of them. We're gonna give away one and most of the ones I have are pretty heavy. So there's probably some, uh, there's probably some, uh, some pretty sweet, pretty sweet minis in there, so. We will give one of those away. So we'll do that a little bit later in the stream. So uh, hang on and uh, mm -hmm. stay with us and have some fun with the painting and uh, have a chance to win an awesome box of miniatures. Cool. Thank you very much. When we were doing the, yeah, yeah, thank you, man. I mean, when we were doing the unboxings the other day that you were doing, Dave, even some of the lighter ones still had some amazing models in them. Yeah, oh, I mean, they, the, like, yeah, don't, don't, well, you know, the, the trick obviously is that when you're going, when you're at the shops and you look at those blind boxes, pick up the heaviest one. But <laughs> after you've, you've bought the heaviest one a few times, um, don't be fooled, the lighter ones, there are some fantastic uh, miniatures in them. Some really, really clever stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't, don't yeah. be fooled by the super heavy ones. Yeah, absolutely. I've been um, incredibly impressed by the the level of uh, paint layers on these as the new sets come out, as well as the eyes, how nice and tight those are. And yeah, everything really... is just getting so good, so good. Yeah, speaking as a mini painter, there are ones that come from just like, I love this, just as is. Yeah. Like, good to go, yeah. let's do it. So yeah, I'm all for them. All right, so I am going to start off with this Goblin Green, and I just picked up a completely um, random. Which one are we doing? Does it matter? It doesn't really matter because basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint their skin green is the I'm, end game of what we want to do here. I'm going with the bow. Um, I am using a more fine tipped brush in this matter just because it'll be a little bit easier since these are smaller critters. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for a more detail oriented brush and then I'm just going to dip my brush into my paint and you'll see me every so often I will test the paint on my thumb just to see if it's too much. You'll know it's too much if like you're trying to paint and it's going everywhere. You don't need too much on your brush to move it around. You can also do something called thin your paints, which is, you'll hear this joke, thin your paints. Uh, so you're not paints. over layering your paint and making it too thick. I personally tend to keep my paints slightly thicker when I'm working with smaller creatures because I know I'm gonna move the paint around a little bit more. And I find that a thicker bead gives me more control around the edges. But you normally want your paint to be the consistency. I like to use food products because most people can identify with those. So you want your paint to be about the consistency of a nice, thick, heavy cream or like a maple syrup. That's when you know your paint's about the right consistency. So if you need to thin your paint a little bit because it's come out like a tube of toothpaste, then you can take some water and add a few drops to what you've put onto your palette and thin it down that way. 
but I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start painting. I'm actually going to start with the ear on this guy. And I grabbed the one that has, he's wearing a little hood. Yep. Got and then, and spear. Looks fantastic. yeah. And the nice thing about these is that they have already come primed. So you do not need to take the additional step of stopping to prime all of your miniatures before you can start getting paint on them. And I'm sure the question is, do we have to prime the minis? I would highly recommend that yes, you do prime your minis if you have minis that are not primed because that helps your paint bond much better to the plastic. So I'm just gonna go in and if it looks like it ought to be green, paint it green as opposed to paint it back black. And at this point, you don't have to worry too much if say your green kind of hopscotches onto the hood or something like that, because it'll be a lot easier to cover that up with the hood color than trying to keep it perfectly. Don't get the hood at all. It just makes it a lot better that way, especially since we have to like work under some portions here. Like you can see there's a flap we have to work under. So I don't get too worried too much about, oops, the green skipped over. And that's why I said you kind of work from the skin and up. Do you want to, um, have you got the ability to make these <clears throat> uh, model one larger, Dave, on the screen for everybody? I can do. Which ones? Uh, Which, these. One? Yep. We can, what we like. do, is, we're using Zoom. So all we've got to do is pin. And then what I'll do is I'll move the uh, screen around for everybody so that everyone can see better. So we have some of us in the window mm -hmm. and yeah. some of us not. I think people are on the Zoom, Zoom was on the thing was saying that it's too small you want to be able to see, to see it yeah yeah definitely That's if fine. we can do that that'd be wonderful so let's try and get that in there this is our this is the, as we said this is our first uh version of this kind of thing so these are um try and error try and error yeah exactly this is our pilot here we go let's go tv on people <laughs> So you can see I'm not being too precious around the mouth area because I know I'm going to go back in and get the teeth done and even the gums done. So for right now, it's okay if you get some of that green on the inside of the mouth, because once we go back in with a different color, you'll be able to clean that up a little bit. Right now, it's just getting this base color of the goblin green on. And again, if you don't have the Vallejo paints like I do, it's aiming towards a mid-tone green with a yellow tone to it. So you're going to just take a green and add a little bit of yellow if you have generic paint so you don't have a specific paint. And V, that, that brings me to a to a question. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your thoughts around, you know, sometimes when you do these things, you see, oh, like, um, you know, doing the eyes, doing like the whites and the reds of the eyes and then doing the skin or doing all the skin and then coming back and doing the whites and the reds. What, what do you think is a better way or better approach? I never fall into the, this is the best way. This is the better way. This is the should way. Because what happens is, is everyone is going to paint and approach things in a different way. It's just the mm -hmm. nature of being individuals. I will always encourage, try a few different ways and see what works best for you. It's also why I will tell people who have painted with me, it's like, okay, great. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but please be sure to check out so-and-so or so-and-so because they too also paint and you might appreciate some tips and tricks that they too have to share with you as a mini painter. My personal preference, I tend to save the eyes for last because I can just go in and I do a trick where I turn the mini upside down to break the matrix thing that your brain will naturally do with the human face. And then it just makes it easier for me to go in and paint those as needed. But I've also been painting eyes for quite a while. It definitely helps to have your flesh tone nearby if for some reason your eyes go a little wonky on you. But I do tend to save my eyes for last just because that's my personal preference. But yes, you can absolutely, if you wanted to, start off by doing the whites. And some people even do like start off blacking out the eye area, then doing the white of the eye and then doing the pupils. Mm -hmm. as another approach because the black around the eye helps give it just a little bit more depth as well. So it's one of those things where, you know, you could even do it with this, like take a mini and do it one way and then do another one a different way and see what fits best for you. 
but for me it's always I tend to do like those tiny little details to, little details towards the end okay yeah I do as well I, I tend I tend to do the the eyes last mm-hmm. but I've seen I've seen some some folks do like that eye first and I yeah you know I, I've been able to kind of create I've tried it both ways and been able to create about the same so I'm not really sure which which way I like it better to tell the truth which is totally fair. I tend to default towards what I'm most familiar with. <clears throat> okay. so it looks like that this guy with the hood, he has just a couple of fingers poking out of the top here. Yeah, I, I was trying to try and get those as well. It's just. They are small, but fierce. Yeah. Yes. There definitely is. I always recommend whenever you're painting, just make sure you're moving your mini around because you'll catch different angles that you think you may have gotten or you think it was already addressed and you spin it around. You're like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not quite. I'm seeing right here, I need to get a little bit more there. And again, Yes, there's a little bit of green going up on the sword, but I know I'm going to address the sword's blade later. And that's where I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my approach. Right now, I want to get green on the goblin. On all three of them. And it always helps to save the backing from these packages because you'll be able to use these as a reference. Yep. You can go back and look and see the areas you need to get it. So now, Dave, you've never painted before, or you've dabbled? No, I, it's, it's not, even, not even dabbling. It's literally, <laughs> why don't I come up with an idea where I can paint some miniatures? <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is it, really. Um, this, this was how it came to be. I, so I've, I've bought miniatures. I, I've bought a lot of WizKid stuff over the, well, recent years. I've only been into miniatures recent years, kind of getting into um, tabletop maps, mm -hmm. because... For those of you who don't know, Band of Badgers is actually a uh, a physical club. It was a club we started three or four years ago um, for a local community. We, we play in a big mansion house. Um, there are now 80 members. Um, we didn't start with 80. It's, it's grown over the years. That's um, amazing. And then, of course, you know, because being a DM for, for multiple tables, you kind of want, oh, yeah, I'll... I'll spend some extra money i'll get a map and then you want minis mm -hmm. rather than cardboard or tokens mm -hmm. and you just kind of naturally expand so i have what i've now understood to be the box of shame which, are, which is <laughs> I said, a bunch of unpainted minis no, box of shame, pile, yeah. the pile of potential dave i was gonna say that's potential. not a box of shame that's you know yeah that's sunday afternoon <laughs> <laughs> The if pile only, of potential. If only Sunday afternoons were mine, they're, they're not mine. Right? Yeah. yeah. I am also a parent, and my Sunday afternoons yes. have gone. <laughs> that's 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 true. That is definitely a fair statement. I am right now looking at these feet. Okay, so the feet. He's kind of wearing open toe sandals. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. It's like there's a little bit poking under through here as well. Just and I would say. Um, Something else, you know, as you're painting these, and I don't know how well you can, I don't know, the camera's not, this, this camera's not coming through great, but um, there's a, uh, a number of areas that you'll, you'll, you'll kind of mess up and you'll hit. Just don't even worry about that, right? Because mm -hmm. you can, you can come back later and sort of fix those things. Mm -hmm. And exactly. as you, as you put on the, uh, the other it, layers. I think it's one of the, one of the things is that the bit that, I mean, I, I bought the stuff, so I would pass couple of weeks when I knew this show was going to happen. Um, I've then been on to Amazon and hobby shops and looking at videos and finding what people are using and just kind of investing in it. Um, but I think the biggest fear is even, even if I wasn't doing the show is I, I bought the stuff and I don't want to get anything wrong. And I was just going to say, yep. Yeah, I know you, you say we can fix it, we can paint over it. It's still kind of, oh yeah, I still want to 
you know, am I doing it right? Am I getting it wrong? What if and... I picked the wrong colour? You know, we we so before the show began, we were talking about what colour would our goblins be? Would it be Smurfs or or no blue <laughs> red? <goblins? laughs> um, but yeah, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. No. It? they're your no. they're your baddies. Exactly, and oh, that's they could be quite... goodies as well. Yeah, quite frankly, that's the one thing I find that keeps most people from wanting to jump into learning how to paint miniatures. There's this worry that I'm not going to get it right and that it has to be perfect. It's like, no, it really Mm -hmm. doesn't. Because like anything you're learning how to do, it's a growing experience. It's a learning process. So the more you do it, the better you'll get. But, you know, also be fair on yourself that it's like, okay, so this one didn't turn out exactly as I wanted. But what did I learn from it? Okay, well, I learned this, that and the other thing. Let me try it for the next one. And the more you do it, the more you get accustomed to how the paints are going to function, how things go onto the miniatures, how the plastic's going to respond to different brush strokes. And then before you know it, because you finally stepped into it and you gave up this worry about, well, it's not perfect, you're getting closer to the end results that you're hoping to get the more you start painting minis. Yeah. So yeah, that, all... that I think is like the biggest hurdle for everyone is it's not perfect. Well, it, it's not going to be. And that's okay. And, and like perfect. you posted on your, your Twitter t- today, like your mm-hmm. first mini like post your first mini like try and keep hold of your first one yeah if you can so that you can Absolutely. like look back and be like look. even in like six months if you were painting like regularly the mm-hmm. levels of improvement just to be able to look back and go yeah it's like i have improved yeah. a lot yeah mm-hmm. it's amazing what happens even month by month or depending on how often you're painting week by week even I- it's like I've just zoomed in on my goblin. I didn't even realise I hit his hood and, and things like that. But as you say, I'm not I'm now. You know, it's like learning to drive. But now I have my mm-hmm. my, my professional artist <laughs> <laughs> on hand to go. No, it's fine. Just fix it. You do it like this. Yeah, just don't ask me to parallel park your miniature for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <right. laughs> that, that's not gonna. That's not gonna end well. <laughs> you're allowed to fail two things where I live. And that was one, that was the, actually the only thing I failed, but I was like, yeah, I know I'm not going to pass that one. (laughs) Not my forte. So if you, uh, everyone who's, who's watching, if you happen to have um, a question for, for V or for Josh or for anyone really, um, don't hold back. Just type a big capital Q in live chat and ask away. Um, it can be technique, it can be programs, we can even talk about Mandalorian. Whatever mm. you want to talk about. Oh, we allowed to talk about Mandalorian. Wait, yeah. I was going to say, I yeah. thought we weren't, are we? Yeah. yeah. We can't, we can't do, do spoilers. I didn't know if Steve had actually watched it yet. <laughs> Steve's constantly... I have, I, I have oh, a, I'm, I, I'm like a... a yeah, concentrating. <laughs> and now that paint where I didn't want paint. See? Yeah, it's, and yeah, now it's I'm okay. annoyed. It's there we go. That's all because I was playing turning mute happen. off. Oops. I can't. Don't to focus. Yeah, yeah. Another thing I, I, I'd say, you know, with the whole like paint paint thinning, this was another thing. Like when I first started, like painting. Um, if you feel like you get it on there too thick, I, I like to just go back and really work the brush over it. You know, mm-hmm. just just keep taking the brush and going over all those little details. And even if you get it on too thick and you don't thin it right, you you generally can get it where you want it. Yeah. But but you definitely want to go back and kind of work the brush over it. Otherwise, you know, some of these some of these sculpts they have such high detail. You know, you could fill that in absolutely accidentally mm-hmm. with with paint and then you kind of lose some of that detail but just yeah. keep you know i mean did you see that's just basically what i'm doing like i'll get the paint on if it's a little bit too much i'll quickly pull it off on the side of my hand and like i've posted in the past like my thumb will be technicolor sometimes <laughs> yeah because i'm using that as my you know quick little lot mode yeah it's just these little things that happen Especially these goblins are so little. I mean, there's such little, they tiny are little, little, but tiny, yeah. tiny little models. But they're great. They were so iconic. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They are. I, they're the first things I think of with Pathfinder, quite mm. frankly. Yeah. 
Well, it's just, it's just, so those of you who don't know Pathfinder, um, pick up a book or pick up a, a graphic novel as well. Um, there is a graphic novel called Weeby Goblins. Or tune, is, or tune in on Thursday night. Or tune in on Thursday night. Plug, plug, plug. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's absolutely great. Now, and I will confess, so I, have, I have never played Pathfinder. I've painted many a Pathfinder many, but I've never played it. It's amazing. See, we need to book you in, V. Yeah, it's amazing. No, actually, I mean, not to call anyone out, but <laughs> all our guests, when I say, yeah, it's a Pathfinder game, none of our guests have ever played. So it's not like you need to, to read all the rules. It's like anything, you know, when you go into your first D&D game or, or board game. Mm. Um, just kind of be open-minded, jump in, roll high. Okay. Um, with our games, or with, I should say, my games when I'm GMing, I just like my players to be as descriptive as possible. Fun. So, you know, when they want to vault across the room, uh, jump onto the table, slide on uh, on the silver tray, jump off, land on the candelabra, swing across the room, um, you know, and then cleave someone's head off. You can. You can do all of that. Mm -hmm. Just all that in one turn. High. Yeah, <laughs> roll high. <laughs> What did the dice say? <laughs> exactly. No. Generally, generally no is the answer to the dice say. <laughs> if, if, um, if you can describe it and you want that dramatic movie moment, mm -hmm. you want to be wowed by it, then do it and roll high. Because if you roll low, you know, yeah, it's going to go wrong, but everyone's still going to remember that moment. This is true. <clears throat> I I think people often remember the moments where everything goes wrong more than when it goes right. They will on my show because I'm recording it. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it. Yeah. No, there's definitely some truth to that, though. I mean, I've been in games where it's like you want the dice to go one way and they just will not behave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Um, in that case. Mm-hmm. But just, I mean, even saying that, just the same, you can have those moments where the yeah. exact opposite happens, where, you know, um, the big baddie, the big big main boss in the game, the dragon's chasing you, and bam, mm -hmm. you manage to roll a double 20. It's, it, That's it can always fun. happen. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, in my game last night that I was playing with my friends, I ran up to, uh, I'm a, well, what am I? I'm a goblin in that. And I, I ran up to an orc and grabbed both his legs to try and electrocute him and rolled a natural one. And I was just left holding onto an orc's feet. It's <laughs> 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 so, like, oh, hello. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So I see that someone is asking about uh, brush sizes. A must for a base, base set for brushes. A uh, good size to work with to start from. Actually, what I'm holding is a good one because it'll do detail work. So this is a 10 over zero. And I'm using my go-to Mod Podge ones from uh, Plaid Crafts. But you can also go for, this is more the general details brush. So it's a little bit bigger than a fine details brush. And Vallejo does have starter set brushes if you want that. And if you want to get sets of brushes even just go you don't have to always go for like that we even talked about this before the stream you don't always have to go like super high quality type of brushes when you first get started just get yourself a set of model brushes price point depends on what you're willing to do but i find that it helps to have a set going because everyone also has a favorite brush i have found like some people go for like a tiny tiny brush to paint others will be like no like give me a bigger brush and that's what i want to use while i'm getting some basic colors on or even even detail work. I know some people can use a larger point brush and still get the same details. So it's it's play around and see what works best for you. So I would always recommend if you're beginning, get yourself a set of mixed brushes, not just one, because you may find that one's working better for you than another one might. But it helps to right. have sort of a general purpose brush, a flathead brush, and then a fine tip brush like this one. I managed to pick up, uh, so I, I got a, I think a set of 10 for, on, on Amazon for uh, five quid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, they're all different sizes. They're these tri kind of triangular um, fun holders, I guess. Triangular mm -hmm. nibs, I don't know. 
Uh, but all different sizes. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, five quid is not going to... Yeah. Not going to be top quality, but it will get the job done. Well, it's also, it helps you to get a feel for everything too, to make sure you even enjoy miniature painting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is actually, I mean, I bought, um, I think it was Avernus. Mm -hmm. No, no, before Avernus. I think it was. Um, so it was D&D, &D, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. And I bought, because I, I was heavily getting into uh, miniatures at that point. And I was, at the, at the time Mad Mage came out, I was halfway through Storm King's Thunder with mm -hmm. one of my campaign groups. And we had already planned to do Mad Mage. So I thought I would, I'd buy an entire brick, which is eight packs of the mystery boxes mm -hmm. from WizKids, literally because they were painted. And I'd seen, you know, up, when, as, as our Band of Badgers club, the physical club has, has grown. Um, there were people there who were, you know, painters and painted their minis. Um, and I think it was Alex who showed me some pre-painted ones. And I was like, well, that saved me a ton of time. Because it's mm -hmm. not just the cost. Um, there's a time value to it as well. Right. And yes, they're mystery boxes. So there's always, there's always a risk. But I right. don't mind doubles because so many times your players are not fighting just one creature. <laughs> exactly, you, yeah. You need two wolves or, you know two orcs and that's another thing which is um the unpainted come in pairs which is great apart from goblins mm -hmm. where you've got tri triples but the um the cost of a painted a pre-painted mini is great it's full color it's on the table i can rip it open and the jo it was job done it was it was lovely yeah and like there'll even be times where it's like i still will prefer to get a pre-painted Again, for sake of time. Yep. Because clearly I do enjoy painting miniatures, but that lovely thing called time can get to be very interesting. Yes. Mm. Time catches up. But again, mm -hmm. so here, here, there's another reason for doing the show, because then I can purposely set aside a little bit of time and mm -hmm. just see how this goes, actually. And look, I'm, I'm painting. I'm you painting are. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a great job, Dave. Yeah. I'm not I well I'm I'm not so I mean I'm doing I'm doing that kind of thing of not trying to be too careful. And like yeah. Steve said, I've already knocked a few you know, like I've just done that floor really badly, but I think I've got too much paint on the paintbrush. Paintbrush. You you bins. definitely do. So if you want to, I would actually rinse your brush, Dave. Okay. And give yourself a clean brush again because if you have paint that's loading up to yeah. the upper portion of your brush and going over it, then you definitely have way too much. You really just want to dip your brush in the lower third of your brush height. If it starts creeping up on you, it makes it actually harder to control. Cool. See, tips, people. <laughs> so, uh, everyone in the audience, if you have, uh, again, if you have questions, let us know. Um, don't be shy. Yes. Um, I only bite when I DM. There you go. <laughs> and that's in character. So, so um, what, what games are you, are you DMing or running at the moment? Uh, I am not DMing at the moment. I'm actually more player mode right now. Um, <laughs> which for me, time-wise, is fantastic because mm -hmm. prep time is non-existent for me. Are you, um, are you still playing with Jake Norman? You said that was a regular... A regular get like before we we went live. Oh we yeah. About yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm still game. doing. Yeah, I'm. We're on our fifth season for Dawnbringers. Uh, we're doing an Icewind Dale campaign now. We just yep. finished up a. Um... Oh jeez, why am I blanking on it? <laughs> First I think because it was so traumatic for my character. She's like, it's done. It's over. We're 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 completed. <laughs> um. Nightfang Spire, some, some, something, something, he took one of the older modules and I'm trying to remember this whole name. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, we've done some with Citadel is how we started off and then, you know, phased into other ones. So it's been a fun exploration. Is it the Dragon of Ice Spire, Ice Peak. Spire Peak? No, it wasn't that one. It was, um, 
And I've always I've only been looking at the overlay for it for a while. I'm sure I'll remember <laughs> once this is done. Isn't that always the way it happens? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like no, it's, always it's the way it happens. right there. You like wake up tomorrow morning you. and just shout it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> that one. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like when uh, when I get asked on stream, like, oh, what's your what's the best board games to play right now? And I'm like, uh, I, only know, like I only know like a thousand, but I like nothing's coming to mind. Right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like the yeah. one that I just touched and put away, but you know, <laughs> we'll get back to you on that one. So what character are you playing in, uh, in this? Uh, I play, her name is Cantriel, and she is a bard ranger. Nice. And she is not your typical bard. In fact, um, we had a good laugh because someone on Twitter once said, oh, I really like how V does vicious mockery for her bard. And one of my fellow players chimed in like, oh, no, that's her bardic inspiration for us. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a very much a come that's on, great. stop, stop dicking about? <laughs> uh, she'll be like, oh, I see you tried really hard. How about next time try harder and better? <laughs> Like, she's just a very quippy, sarcastic bard. I mean, she does sing every so often, but for her, she's not your typical, I'm going to, you know, win everybody over with my charming quality. She's like, look, you're going to listen to me because I tell you to, and that's just the way it's going to work. If you disagree, I'm going to make your life very difficult. <laughs> so that's that's my bard. I absolutely love this model right here with the little, the one with the little cloak and the double, uh, yeah, that one's dogs, fun with the dog blade. slicers. I was literally yeah. thinking the ears sticking out of the hood is yeah, amazing. Yeah, this this might be my favorite goblin model. I, I'd have to look at them all again, but this may be my favorite. I just love the way this looks. It is. I, a fun, I, I actually, yeah. It's so mine cool. is the one with the bow because I'm a ranger. I pretty much always play a ranger. Yeah, yeah, I default to so, ranger too. It's um, a little bit of everything, which is nice. Well, this is literally what my goblin in my current game, pretty much what I would envisage him looking like. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. I'm actually going to rinse my brush because it's starting to get dried out. Yeah, I'll put my brush on. Okay, I think I got all my that greens. Happens. I think I got all my greens on. I'm almost done with this spell. I just need to get hands and feet, I Not believe. Missing. Love it. I don't bite when I do I let the players bite each other. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Am I am I playing in a different game then? Is it your twin brother who DMs us. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you read your introduction involves how how you're going to TPK us. Well, I haven't yet. Yeah. Being the operative no. word. No, yeah. It's going to be the... Uh, I mean, I, mean, I tried episode, very right? hard last episode, don't you remember? You did try hard last Joe, episode. And, and yeah. thanks to the fate of the dice, yes, uh, the three of us managed to survive. And it was only the dice. Yeah. Yeah, Joe, I want to see you bring the pain this Friday. Mate, I was trying so hard last time. Like <laughs> after, after the show, they were like, you know, it's all right if you actually do want to try and kill our characters off. And I was like... I was trying. You don't understand. <laughs> like, I wanted to. Yeah. The dice just yeah. yeah. The was... dice just didn't play nice. <laughs> that bit where Steve was in the box and had to turn the key from the inside. Mm -hmm. Could it, uh, it was like like eight d eight plus forty damage or something ridiculous. Oh jeez. And yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I wasn't. It's not the, not for the want of trying. So... Oh, yeah. It's it would have been thing. it would have been great if it was one of those boxes where you know you just open it and it's just instant death right you just open the box and just and it's just yeah. done you're unconscious well it, it <laughs> says on it that that um you Live your character thank you yeah it says that your character Ew. just turns to dust oh so Ouch. it's not even not even death saves it's literally it's like, just you're done you're done yeah. completion everything like that. <laughs> Oh, I see there's another. Um, how long have I been painting miniatures? Uh, five, over five years now uh, in terms of painting minis, but I've been painting as a painter for a very long time, you know, decades. Uh, so it was one of those things where it was going from using canvas and other types of uh, things to paint to shrinking it all down <laughs> is really how it worked out. And what got me started was learning how to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and then realizing that 
there was this whole realm of crafting and terrain building that went into it. And that's kind of what hooked me because I have always been a person who likes to make and create things always. So I was like, wait, you mean I get to play and make the world? Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sign me up. So that's really what got me into miniature painting. I started with terrain and I'm like, oh wait, there's little people who need to be added to it. Okay, give me those too. And my first miniature was a hero quest. What was that one? I want to say it was like a gargoyle like thing. But do you yeah, still know what you're talking about? Is he, is he yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's it's downstairs, uh, yeah, down in my uh, mini display. It, 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 it's the one that's got like sort of those like almost not like wings, but it's got like some is things it, that sort of come. Yes, yeah, like the horn things that pop yeah. out, and it was yeah, and like, I it's like that big. One, yeah, and I painted that one specifically because one of them was broken off. I'm like, oh well, it's a broken one, so if, yeah. you know anything's wrong with it, it's no big deal, or whatever. So that was the first one I painted. Yeah, yeah, I've got a mint. Uh, I've got a mint copy and i always try to make sure it's visible like in my videos but i i've mm. got a i've got a mint well pretty much mint as mint as it can be for the for the age uh copy of uh hero quest the box the, the, the box isn't mint but i did a custom uh insert for it so it's like pluck uh -huh. foam and everything Ooh. so it's got a it's got a custom pluck foam insert and everything's every miniature has got its own little spot and all the chits nice. got their own little spot and nice it's just it's so cool each furniture piece is like slotted in there and Ooh. you know it's just it's just one of those games that's like iconic right for like, oh, even totally. at the time like the the, the, yeah. the furniture that was included just the the style mm -hmm. of the game it just so Absolutely. so many memories so awesome mm -hmm. yeah i remember getting my parents to buy that for me years and years ago and yeah. just hounding them all the time to play it when i was little yeah well it's um, coming back this this year isn't it hasbro are Kind kind of yeah, re-releasing it. They did their own their own Kickstarter, <laughs> which is a bit strange. Yeah, the pulse. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to sell pulse. it until we get a million bucks. But, <laughs> um, I did order. I think it. it's because they're <laughs> treating that more as like a pre-order concept was the idea behind it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did do it. I was. <laughs> oh, like, oh my God. I yeah I did I participated I did. because it came out I, I, we, I thought about it I was very tempted there, there's I mean again we, we've talked about this on, on our other stream the gaming streams so this is kind mm -hmm. of our first conversational stream but oh. um, we've, we've talked about it on different bits and pieces where uh, Steve and I have both spent a lot of money with uh, various kickstarters in recent years Mm -hmm. And last year, although, you know, we're in, so we're all, most of us are in the UK. So once we, say, we sound like English, they're not accents, but we actually we do speak that way. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> These are not really? our, uh, <laughs> Actually do speak that phrases. way. Wow. <laughs> well. We speak like this. Shall I? That's, why, that's, why it's so, that's why it's so good. Oh, yeah. I was like, damn, you guys are good. Wait, you're yeah. native? Yeah. yeah. I've never we're known. You, yeah, you, you mean I, you mean I don't have to put this bloody accent on for the rest of the show? No, you can just, honey, you can just take it off and put it to the side and just jump in whatever you're most comfortable doing. I mean, whatever floats your boat, then just go for it. Uh, what, what was my um, Starfinder? Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the whole of October, I generally speak with a southern twang anyway, so... Um. I, I will have to say, Dave, you and Jeff and the, the voices you did there in Starfinder were really good. Like, you had me <laughs> cracking up. Those those were great. And, you know, if I want a career change, I am available for voice acting. I've never done it before. <laughs> there but, you go. Uh, yeah. um, Ryan's got a question for us. He's yeah. saying, uh, what challenges are you all having a hard time with painting right now, if any? Painting. No, just get, getting green paint everywhere. <laughs> 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 I know what mine hey, is. Ryan, mine, how you doing? Mine's not sticking my tongue out whilst I'm painting. Oh, that's, that's a technique, We're, though, and yeah, it helps. It's I'm like actively concentration. trying not to. Uh -huh. Did you do that when yeah. you was in school, though? Like doing your handwriting? You, mm -hmm. you just put your tongue out. Uh -huh, All the time. Concentrating. Yeah. Right. What we're going to do, we we got three minutes till 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock in the UK. So <laughs> what we'll do, top of the really hour, is... Here. <laughs> Top of the hour, we will switch cameras and we'll go back to a full. We'll go to a full screen. We'll see so show everyone, and then we can kind of see uh, progress, maybe. 
Mm-hmm. And we may need, I'm just thinking, because if we're already into the another hour, we might want to consider it. So we'll okay, just then focus on one. Pick, pick one and let's go with that one to get that yeah. one finished up. Yeah, good, good idea. So I'm thinking... Pick your best. I'm probably going to do Hooded Dude. Yeah, I am but, too. Do we want to do Hooded that. Dude? Yeah, I'm going to do the Hooded Dude. I'm gravitating dude. towards Mr. Hoodie too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah Hooded. Okay. So we will focus on Hoodie Boy. Which will be his official name. <laughs> I'm going to find me a brown for that Blobo one. the Gobbo. Yeah, right? <laughs> Unless we got the blue in there. That'll be fun. I love these little... Um, not not a promo or anything it's just what i what i personally use but i love these little citadel um uh paint shade sets you know you can buy like the little sets you know that mm-hmm. like you get all the shades and the, and they get it comes with like a little brush i uh i i love these for like 30 some bucks or something i think i paid for this or i might have got it on sale at like friends and nobles or something I'm just the gonna... with whiz kids licensing they have pulled together some sets too i'm actually using one right now but they have this basic starter case yeah that comes with Ooh, brushes nice. and... yeah so it has all of these I'm trying to let it stuff match the seals in our so you'll see it has whiskey logo on it so we don't sell this ourselves oh, wow. this is something you would get from vallejo like go to hmm. your game store check online prices vary depending on who's selling it but it has a good number of paints like these are all the paints that come in it so you can very much Oh, yeah. Start. That's really cool. Yeah, moving, yeah. Uh, it looks like it's averaging around seventy-nine U.S. dollars. How much? How many paint pots do you get though? Uh, that is... sixty, isn't it? Or is it? Yeah, it's a the... good count. So Not that I was looking looking up the other day or anything at all. <laughs> so it looks like forty. <laughs> no, I was much. looking at I was looking at the large one. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the bigger one. I have that to do. Yeah. That was a, that was yeah. a good one. Because they, but it's a good. Got... They do an airbrush one as well, don't they? Yeah, they have a whole they have a whole bunch of different lines. There's model, there's game, there's br- airbrush, uh, these, everything like that. So these are amazing. These airbrush paints, okay. the shifters. Yep, the ones that like what? changes the. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. question. So it's like what? It's like two bucks, two bucks a paint pot then. Around that. Depending. Well, yeah, it did, honestly, like a lot of times you'll see pricing is going to vary depending on so, where you purchase them too. We have hit the top of the hour. Good. Ooh. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly, uh, while everyone is getting ready, um, I'm going to switch to a bigger set. I will uh, change the view to gallery. Let's get everybody on as best we can. And just kind of seeing who's in the audience. Um, who else we got? Thank you, Crafty Gobbo. Um, I've, got, I've got a feeling I know who you are. I'm not, not 100%. Crafty Gobbo, welcome. Hope you're enjoying it. If you have any questions, do let us know. Um, oh, Level Up TV. Uh, Level Up Dice, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, Marshall Mowbray, thank you. They they won a competition the other day, last week, I believe. Fun. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, Tactical Viking. Love the name. <laughs> Great name. That is a good name. Uh, th- thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're going to switch, switch things around. Um, but if you have any questions, do let us know. Don't be shy. Uh, I need to unpin that one. Remove pin. There we go. So. Ta-da. There we go. All right. So this fellow is pretty much everything's brown except for the cape and the sword, swords and the buckle. So I'm going to go in with heavy sienna, which is a nice medium brown. So okay. your standard brown color. So if you have a just a nice warm tone brown. And again, if you're not familiar with those, warm means it looks more orangish reddish. Cool means it looks more purplish bluish. And then you have neutrals, which it's, you know, doesn't really fall into either. How's that? I kind of like that color right there. That's a good color too. Yeah. That'll work out nicely. I got a little bit of a lighter got... one, but I like that darker. I've got leather brown. Leather brown's good too. I think that'll look good, yeah. Yeah. I just feel like a little bit of a dark that 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 uh, that good warm brown will give a real mm-hmm. nice color contrast against that green. Yeah. So I'm gonna use go a little darker than I might normally do. I think I just put paint on my own head. I'm not sure. <laughs> 
Did you just paint on your face? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I just noticed the, um, oh, there's paint on my fingers. And then I just, you know, itch my head. So I might have paint on my head. I'm not sure. We're I mean, I have, on, I have done that. I, I'm I pleased that. that at the top of the episode, when we opened these, we didn't have to stick them to the little black disc things. So notice oh, you had done yours. No, I haven't done mine. Because I was I was dead scared of using super glue on camera because I will <laughs> stick myself to something. <laughs> Just a miniature stuck yeah. to your head. Are you even painting minis if you don't get yourself stuck to one? Stuck myself to Christmas decorations at work once. Wait, what? <laughs> All right, this is a story. This I was going to say you, that. You don't, you don't get to just say story. that and then walk away from that. I mean, you could, but we're not going to so, let you. <laughs> we, we, we have a tendency to go over, over the top at Christmas decks in the office, and uh, we, we've made a North Pole from okay. some plastic, plastic pipe, <laughs> some uh, hazard tape, and I, I found this little snow dome uh, that we put on the top, and I filled it with um, like red glitter and white glitter and there was layers it was really 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 good and all i had to do was um uh, stick a plastic t onto the bottom of it so it would go on to, to, onto the end of the pipe so this is this is plastic poly pipe which really you need cement for and i was just using super glue and it sort of melted through the base of the um uh the, the snow globe and i got it on my fingers and didn't realize and i was just holding it there until it set so yeah yeah uh, I, I don't know so you kind of have like the whole <laughs> shaking it it's still there syndrome yeah oh no yeah. so I, I i wasn't looking forward to having the soup glue this before we started when i'm rushing yeah right that, that can be so, a real hazard there's there's mine i don't know if that's gonna show up very well but my greens are a lot more oh. muted than yours are yeah. So what you could always do then with your washes is instead of going for, cause I'm going to shoot for an umber wash, but you can target yourself for one that's more of like a sepia and that'll add some warmth to your green Okay. after the fact. So it'll kind of level, not, no pun intended, no level. I'm looking at the wrong camera, looking at my other stream camera. <laughs> you can level up your pink color that way with your washes. That's another good, helpful thing with washes. Sometimes they can shift the tone of your paint. I was going to ask earlier, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, spray painting. So is spray painting an entirely different animal? With airbrushing? Yeah. Airbrushing. Yeah, sorry. Airbrushing. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a different beast. I, I have an airbrush. I use it when I need to prime a whole bunch of things at once. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. really, or, or I'll use it for like, you know, if I want to get sort of um, an angle of highlights type of thing, I'll do a quick spritz of that type of approach. But I personally uh, have not been able to get into using it effectively. There are some airbrush painters out there where their work is phenomenal. And it's just really cool stuff. And that's, you know, it's great for blending colors and getting uh, different effects going. Yeah. But I find it's definitely, there are people who either absolutely love their airbrush and couldn't dream of living without it. And there are people who are like, no, I'm good. Because they prefer more of the standard paintbrush and paints approach to everything. But it's definitely interesting. I, I was just kind of looking at the, um, uh, again, kind of what you can get on hobby shops. And it looks like it's a, kind of like a like a smoking pipe, ups upside down. So you pour the paint in and then mm -hmm. I've seen machine ones. I've seen ones that you kind of blow through. Um, what, mm -hmm. Again, I, I don't, it's difficult because I don't know anything about them. But I've you, you know, I've seen spray primer in a can, like an aerosol can. Right. But that's yeah. not the same thing. That's this is a different. It's a different tool. Yeah, it's a different tool. It's something there you um, where you can do a little bit more with it because it gets to be something where you can make it a that's finer like, mist. Yeah. As opposed to a broader. Well, it's, it's kind of like when you use a spray paint can. It's like a cone, essentially, yes. of paint coming flying out. With the airbrush, you can adjust that paint cone, if mm -hmm. you will. So you can get into a finer, narrower point or focus for the cone. 
had one for a while. I just haven't really used it that much. Mm -hmm. But that's more yeah. because of the models that I'm painting at the moment. That I'm not on the stage where I need to use it. Yeah. Because I'm batch painting mm -hmm. a 40k army. Uh -huh. Like, <laughs> I'll crank it out when I go to paint my... <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to paint it as if it's actually going to happen in the near future. <laughs> um, but when I go to paint one of my larger dragon minis, I'm definitely going to both get it... Mm situated and primed and then use it for the base color and then I'll go in and I'll use my brush to do the more detailed work that I want to do on it. Um, like I'll use my airbrush for that type of thing, but I know people will do like the whole thing on an airbrush. Um, actually, Angel, uh, the artist we we're talking about again, for some reason we yeah. had a lot of conversation happening off screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm. So Angel, he does fantastic work with an airbrush and he actually does tutorials with it too. So um, I'm trying to think of his YouTube channel. I think it's Angel Vidal, I want to say, for his YouTube channel. Oh, no, it's um, Vidal Studios, or I believe. I'd have to go and look. Yeah. But definitely those. really good tips on airbrushing and how to work the paints and everything. So basically, it's just a matter of getting brown everywhere, <laughs> for the most part. This fellow. I am taking my time around the edge here just to get that brown over. And see, this is where I always call it the Zen where everyone just kind of gets quiet Everyone's and focuses. Quiet. Yeah. yeah. And I have yet to have a painting experience where that doesn't happen, especially when I do convention paints. The concentration face. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is hard, right? We were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's like, you know, you kind of get into the zone. You sort of like forget. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, it's been like eight minutes and I haven't said anything. Yep. <laughs> As long as you're breathing, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> that is a thing, though. Like, I know people like, well, I have to hold my breath to make sure that I can get this little detail. Because, yes, holding your breath does help you study yourself a little bit. But I always have the rule of 10 rule, yes. so or the count of 10 rule. So if you're going to do fine detail work and you're holding your breath, count to 10 and then breathe. <laughs> is, isn't that the same rule as snipers? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I have hold watched this, Two, this yeah. one fellow at one of my paint events. He was like... Well, actually, he had the tongue out like the teeth and like, eh, <laughs> concentration type of thing. <laughs> and I could tell he was holding his breath and I'm watching him. And at one point, he actually did one of these things. It's like, okay, and remember, remember breathe. breathe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Painting yeah. tip, breathe. <laughs> kind of necessary. So, yeah, holding the breath is definitely a thing. It's And it does help. It does help steady. The, but, the other thing is to put your palms together if you can. can. It helps with... Yep. Definitely. You put your palms together. Um, it's, it's oh, when you're painting. Steepling. Yeah. It's yeah. you're basically you can either do your palms together. You'll see sometimes I use my pinky as an anchor, and it's basically you're doing um, opposite force, and that creates a more stable center point for you to focus on, so mm -hmm. you get more stability. Uh, you can also bring in if you have uh, stability issues, especially if you have um, shaky hands. Like I know if I take a man inhaler, my hands start to shake. And I might forget that I've taken my inhaler and then I need to go paint something. So you can actually bring, excuse me, honey. Uh, what you can actually do is, get in the way. You take your way. elbows and you lock your elbows down against your rib cage and then bring your forearms to your chest and press against your chest with your forearms. And then you push your palms together and you create this basically steepled upside down V shape against your body. And you'll be able to position and hold your mini and your paintbrush more steady mm -hmm. quite, everything drawn in quite good timing because twitching twitchy's just turned up uh who's a friend of ours um who twitches so <laughs> oh okay well that could be something to help you out then yeah so there's there's a couple little techniques like that that'll help and then i mean i will hold my breath when i go to paint eyes <laughs> but you know breathe at 10 that helps. 
And ultimately, you know, you're talking about the Zen moment, everybody being quiet and concentrating. It's that that's why this is relaxing, isn't it? That's, mm-hmm. You just get out of your head, your own head. It's yeah. just you're, yeah. you're in pain. Absolutely. Your focus becomes more on getting this little patch from white to a color and moving around and seeing the progress that you're making. It's, it definitely it's, pulls your attention away. Um, I, I don't know if you got, uh, like a few years back, there was a craze of coloring books. I don't know if you, uh, adult coloring books, not adult as in. You know, Hi. <laughs> yes, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, adult coloring books um, suddenly took off. Mm-hmm. And there were, you know, like like book clubs and things like that. Um, people were sitting around. Yep. Adults coloring in uh, patterns and Absolutely. things, and it was very yeah. kind of zen, very relaxing. Mhm. And this is always fun when I'm trying to get into a spot that is tricky. Yep. So I'm going to pull this up off the frame. inside of the legs on you. I'm, yep. I'm so I have to pull to this that. off from underneath the camera because there's no way I can get my angle that I need under a camera. So I'm pulling in a nice and tight and close. Is there any tips for doing that? Um, sometimes what actually helps, and I don't have one to show you, uh, when I have brushes that have been used a lot and they start getting that little like, you know, curly cue link to them, yep. um, I will use those to get into tighter spots. You can also, there are also some people who will sell brushes where it's actually already bent. So you can get to tighter angles. Uh, so I tend to gravitate towards, I'll save those brushes knowing that this is my, oops, I need to get into a tight spot brush that really is a thing. But that tends to help as well. All right, still going around here. For one so small, they have a lot of little areas. I will say having the bird calling in the background is sort of like enhancing the zenness of it all. Um, yeah, Twitch and Twitch, where you say I may just give it a go, to be honest. Start yep. with something like simple, like a, a skeleton or yes, you know. something like that would be good. You can also, um, it, you'll find it's going to be easier for you to start with larger minis. Mm-hmm. So I always recommend going for monsters like, um, you know, something along this size. Get a bigger guy. So you want a large to work with, and that'll help you get a feel for how the paints work on the miniature and also give you a little bit more to work with. So you're not having to be as finite with your motions. I find that also helps. I just realized I missed a bit of green. Now, now I'm coloring it in. It's like, oh yeah, there's a bit there. Yeah, and that happens. That also very much will often be the situation. So you can just go back in and add in a little bit more color yep. as you go along. So in terms of, um, so question for V, um, mm-hmm. you mentioned like it, oh, I can't remember if we did this, mention this on camera, but Jake Norman, um, yes. and his, his campaign, his, his games, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. what other games have you got coming up? Are you allowed to, oh, that's right. to share um, any or tease any? I am, it's another one on Jake's channel. It's called uh, Hope, Red- Hope and Redemption, and it is Harper's Tale, uh, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's a module that was written by a father and a daughter about her journey through uh, battling leukemia, and oh. they turned it into a I metaphor for the yeah, game. Yeah. It's lovely, it is adorable, it's wonderful. So we play that every other Tuesday evening. So this is our off week this week, but we played last week. and. Inevitably, we're, uh, we're cracking each up because some of the encounters, but it's also, it's poignant because you're on this journey to try and help save someone or save mm-hmm. a group of people from this mysterious disease that they're battling. Mm. And it's, you know, there's this wonderful NPC that we now have in our party, Sir Cheddar, who is a corgi wild magic uh, wizard. It's, it's, He's amazing. I love it. It is fantastic. And our gnome wizard uh, will ride upon him <laughs> like he's his mount. So it's it's just, it's got these wonderful little quirky bits about it, but it's also a really beautifully done tale. 
So that's another one that I'm doing. And I've done others in the past. A lot of it is uh, dialed back. I'll do more like showing up and guesting on games now mm -hmm. just because of time. Uh, so I was uh, on D4. God, was it about a month ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. So that's where I paid my, played my, not paid. <laughs> that's where I played my Furbolg cleric. Yeah. Uh, Patty Jameson. And she was a lot of fun. <laughs> And I was we laughing. I'm like, a... I'm jealous of my PC. She got to hug everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we had Devin and Dustin things. join us in <laughs> one of our games as well. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. They were very good. We had um, mm -hmm. the scene kind of ended with uh, they challenged. <laughs> they, they they played goblins like they do for Beetle and Grim. They're in kind of goblins, just as kind of, right. more more goblins, um, and they challenged a party because this is Joe Joe's game. And uh, I'm a turtle in Joe's game. Okay. And they challenged all the heroes to a, a goblin rap battle. Of course they going. would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were all kind of like, you are. <laughs> and we were deer in the headlights kind of thing. And uh, one, one of our guys tried. Sorry, Gareth. Mm -hmm. you, tr you tried, but you failed. Um, <laughs> And they, they were amazing. We Our jaws were just hanging out. They were absolutely amazing. Uh-huh. Um, See, so. I love stuff like that. What do they do just before they left? They just throw a grenade. Yes, throw a grenade at you. <laughs> Dropped a bomb in the literal and metaphor metaphorical sense. Yeah. Yep. Here you go. Have fun. Bye. So, here's a stick of dynamite. <laughs> oh, funny. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're first starting with miniature painting is there is the three foot rule. It's very easy to get caught up like, oh, I'm looking at this right under the camera, but then holding it out at arm's length. How much of that little bitty detail that you're picking yeah. up now is noticeable? I mean, I don't even have a three foot wing. This is this is maybe like two feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So already you're, you can see it's like, so that's why every time you will see people who are mini painting, they will do this because they're playing the, how much do I want to worry about this game? Like, how important is that to me? Well, that, that was another thing that came up in, in conversations we've had because I, um, you know, this is for tabletop. This is for tabletop mm -hmm. play. As long as it's got a little bit of colour, um, I wanted to kind of chuck it out there. But I, I liked, after having pre-painted minis from the mystery boxes, mm -hmm. they, they kind of spoiled me. And I was like, well, how do I get these things painted? Mm-hmm. And ideally I would like to be able to do it myself. But it's you know, just just be good enough that it looks it looks good. Yeah on the table. And that all comes with absolutely it all comes with time. Like we like we said before, the more you do, the more you learn. And little by little you'll realize things get a heck of a lot easier. Because there's also muscle memory involved in the process. Your hands are mm -hmm. learning how to control something, how to move something. You'll be able to tell by sight how you need to move the paint, if you need to suddenly thin the paint, things yeah. like that. And also uh, a question for, for everyone, really, even even mm -hmm. you watching, even the audience. Um, mm -hmm. I now have lots of minis, but I don't have anywhere to store them that keeps them nice. Do you, does anyone, does anyone know of some really good mini storage? Um, um, portable, stackable, maybe like yeah. that. Yeah, there's a couple of ways that I would suggest. Either you can buy a pre-made bag that will have like foam cutouts. Mm -hmm. um, is one way of doing it. There's a couple of different companies that that sell those. Um, I use the, a battle. Another way to do it is, do you know what a rub is? Like, it's a really useful box. That you can get them from like most like. I don't know, Walmart, if you're in America, or like, mm -hmm. um, what's the one that I'm thinking of that's equivalent to that in the UK? Can't remember. But anyway, it's a big, big plastic tub, basically. And get uh, a sheet of um, magnet. So you can get A4 sheets of magnet Ma paper. Oh, and you, you just Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just, sell it, you just super glue that to the bottom of the, the tub. And then on the bottom of your mini, you get another little, an actual little magnet. And attach it to the bottom of the mini. Mm -hmm. You can then put them all in the tray, and they're all stackable as well. Oh, nice. Ooh, we should kickstart that. Uh, fish tackle boxes. 
Yeah, mm, it's another good buy. Good. Yeah. Or ornament boxes if you go after the holidays. Yeah. When they sell ornaments, those are or the boxes for stashing away ornaments. Those are fantastic too. Um, battle foam. I like to use battle foam stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's. Uh, we did have a couple of questions. Uh, if, if anyone uh, knows these companies or would like to showcase their products, <laughs> we can of course. Um, I can show all my minis in them. There you go. So, can you use any kind of paint? Yep. We're all, I think all of us, uh, to a certain yeah. degree, are using different paints at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think also that plays into the whole, like, can I use craft paint? Because you can go into any craft store and you'll see things from Plaid and from Craft Smart and everything like that. And yes, you can use those paints. And you will have people who tell you you cannot use those paints, but you can use those paints. A lot of what happens with those particular paints is that you definitely want to make sure that you are thinning those paints because they tend to run a little bit thicker than model paints. Um, another thing is people say, oh, the pigments, you know, not as fine grade or what have you, which yes, that might happen with some of the paints. But I have found personally that I have used my craft paints on a miniature just because, well, frankly, I was lazy and I didn't want to run upstairs and get my kit. So I'm like, you know what? Yoink, it's right behind me. Let me use that instead. And it still works out perfectly fine. A lot of it boils down to experimenting and realizing how a certain paint is going to act on your miniature in comparison to others. I know with my craft paints that I can't just right out of the bottle, go and use them just because I want to. I may have to add a little bit of a flow aid to them. Like, you know, I will use something like this, uh, airbrush cleaner, or you can get a flow aid and just a little bit of that will help. Or you can even do something as simple as take your water and put in a little drop of dish detergent not dishwasher detergent, dish oh, detergent. And it helps the flow as well. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, a quick and cheap version of it. <laughs> so little tricks like that, you'll figure out that'll help you so you can use paints. And again, especially if you are just starting out and if you don't have access to things like a local game store where you can kind of get a bottle or two and see how you like painting first, then yeah, I, I say, you know, try out the craft paint, see how it feels, see if you like the process of mini painting in and of itself. If you realize, yes, I do like painting minis, that's where you can really start investing in the other things, like getting the nicer brushes, getting the nicer paints, getting this, that, or the other thing, the special holder for your miniatures, you know, like the said, a little one that's being shown right now. So there's all these things where it's, um, you know, I, I don't want to say don't ever use because a lot of times it may be the only option for some people mm -hmm. to get them started. I started using craft paints. That's um, th Same. that's just so much cheaper. Yeah, and that's just it. You get a lot more bang mm -hmm. for the buck. Uh, I mean, I've painted things with miniature paints, not miniature. I mean, with craft paints instead of miniature paints. And someone started arguing with me that no, you use miniature paints. Like, no, I promise. Mm. I use I use my craft paints. Um, and uh, do we need primer? No, all of these models. Uh, come pre-primed so we haven't had to use any primers on these ones just yes. paint straight out of the box for the pathfinder battles deep cuts uh they all come primed ahead of time so it's literally take out of the plastic blister and you can get going no problem what, what's, uh, um, well i was gonna say um in terms of whiz kids what what's mm -hmm. uh, we know dark lands dark lands rising is out mm -hmm. or coming out soon yes um and I've seen adverts that you're going to be doing reprints of the previous collections. Yes. Do, do you know how, um, uh, you know, we're crossing the streams from Peso to sort of D and D realms and things like that. Pathfinder D and D. Um, mm -hmm. how far back are you going? Is it a complete redesign or is it a new paint job? Is it because it, they're, they're completely sold out everywhere? It's basically a restocking. So there's a whole bunch of reprints that are just happening and getting processed through uh, for pre-painted and also for unpainted as well. There's actually a huge reprint that came through for unpainted miniatures mm -hmm. from you know start to finish type of situation. So it's definitely, if there's a miniature you've had your eye on and it hasn't been in stock, well, now's the time to start looking again because those are being redone and brought back in. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, with demand and everything like that. Yes, there are reprints that are happening and coming through. Uh, Pretty much, you know, I, off the top of my head, I could not tell you at this point because of all the minis that are dancing up in here. 
but yeah, there's there's there are reprints that are happening. And you're also doing. Um, are you doing Starfinder as well? Starfinder minis. Mm-hmm. Are they yep. are they out yet? There are Galactic Heroes and Galactic Villains. They are out now, and we will have more coming to you soon. Cool. In the uh, spring, I, yes. Because we started our Starfinder campaign last week, um, mm-hmm. the very first thing we saw, the very first encounter, was a goblin, a space goblin, with a uh, fishbowl helmet on. Yep. Uh-huh. Helmet. And we have a mini of that. There, it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And Dave wants. I forget it. if it's in the heroes I, or the I, villains, but it's I, it, it's out there. Yeah, Josh. Josh was you know nudging me in there. Dave wants one. Yes, yes, yes. I do. Yep. I, yep. I do. Does it actually come with a plaster as well? There's a look. Look in the in the artwork. He's got the goldfish bowl uh, space helmet, but there's a like a mm-hmm. plaster, an X plaster, <laughs> like a plaster on top. I wonder if it was if that detail was on there. I honestly cannot recall off the top of my head because I haven't looked at that set in a few months. But I vividly remember the the, the Vulcan. No, the Goblin. <laughs> the Vulcan. Let's jump. <laughs> yeah. Let's drastically jump, shall we? It's, it was a point yeah. of years. How, how yes, long does it, it take to plan the miniatures then? It's it's actually uh, I don't deal directly with it, but based upon timelines and everything, it's a it's a process. It's not something where it's like, oh, well, I want to have a mini, and then three months later there's a mini. Um, there is coming up with set lists. There are coming up with designs, going back to the drawing board if need be, getting things approved, giving things a second go over. So it can take a good chunk of time. Do you um does WizKids? I mean, I know it does. Like, WizKids as a company that also does Hero Clicks mm-hmm. and, and bits and pieces like that, and you have contracts with both Payzo and D and D. Mm-hmm. do you do um is there other minis as well is there do you do like uh independent publishers do you do your own range your own unique range we do we have um for whiz kids themselves we have the warlock brand uh you're going to be seeing not just the tiles but now we're going to be having accessories come out uh, uh right. so things like the marketplace and the torture chamber so it's basically, it's all these pre-painted miniatures of, you know, various scatter for your terrain, as well as various minis in and of themselves. Yeah. Um, and there are the WizKids deep cuts for unpainted. There's the Viking set that just came out recently, uh, which is fantastic. There are all these great NPC style miniatures in there, as well as like a table and an Earl's throne and yeah. pillars with shields on them, things like that. So we do have a couple other things that go in. It's not just, you know, D&D. It's not just Pathfinder. You do have a 4D line. You do have the uh, deep cuts line specifically for WizKids. And there's also uh, My Little Pony and Transformers for Unpainted. I'm trying to think what else. There's. Uh, we just started up with Magic the Gathering for Unpainted as well. Uh, oh, which, wow. oh, that's a beautiful line of yeah. sculpts. Yeah. yeah. The Magic the Gathering is really nice. Yeah. I, I'm very much liking those uh, personally. Do you do you have a favorite? Mini? Yeah. Do you have a, oh. a favorite mini or a favorite from every set or something like that? Like oh, from Dark God, Lands, what, what's your favorite from Dark You Lands? you're you're throwing a Sophie's choice in my lap right now. <laughs> 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 um okay, I think probably from Pathfinder, my favorite miniature is the adult black dragon, because it looks like mm-hmm. Maleficent. Yeah, that is kidding. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Now you say it, yeah. Yeah, it's got this Maleficent-esque look to it. I can see it from Um, here. It's great. I've I've even named her Maleficent, so there's that. Uh, In terms of D&D, quite frankly, it's the Charlin Dragon right now is my favorite. Because it's just such a a nice, hefty, big boy. I'm a fan of it. We're playing playing for... So... um, I got my uh, my platinum uh, edition mm-hmm. of uh, being the girl nice. frost maiden finally arrived through uh, UK customs. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've got my um, um, my Chard- was it the Chardaran token? Chardaran, it's, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, it's it's just such a neat that and like in the story itself, it's a really cool concept. Yeah, I mean at, at the moment um, I'm currently learning more about WizKids. Um, because you've got the, um, I saw the tower and the bridge and they mm-hmm. looked amazing. 
Um, yes. And then you've also got the. Uh, I think it's you guys. I think it's the Frost Maiden uh, paper. Yes, um, the paper crafts. They just they crafts. are coming. What week are we in? In two weeks. Yeah. Twenty seventh, they'll be releasing in stores, so they're available for pre order type of situation. But those those are fun to put together. I did a live stream for that on WizKids channel. Uh, really right. cool and a great option for just getting into gathering terrain and having options for sure. Um, and I like the details that they have on them, like the paint job, especially like I found out if you have blue lighting, because I have lights that change color. If you put it under yeah. like blue lighting, it looks extremely realistic and almost 3D for the snow effects. <laughs> the snow is so what was, I, I like. The rooftop yeah. artwork was amazing. Yeah. Because it wasn't just, just a, a white roof. Right. Uh, that, yeah. that, oh, sort of, that was it. That made everything kind of... Uh, look yeah. very very nice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I, very impressed. I absolutely yeah. love the paper craft. <clears throat> yeah. I think I think those are probably going to be those. <clears throat> I really hope those get really big. And the reason Same. is because y you're getting you're getting a full size building that is perfectly mm -hmm. scaled for miniature play. Uh, at a what I would say is an extremely low price point for yeah. for what you get like the lodge. I mean that's an yeah. extremely low price point for yeah. having and a full size building. Take the roof off, inside yeah. experience, outside experience, and they're so reusable, right? E yeah. Even even if you used a miniature that's a little bit bigger scale than your standard like Pathfinder mm -hmm. D and D miniature, it would yeah. still work for like an outside experience. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just phenomenal. I, I love the papercraft set. Yeah, they are they are definitely. Um, I'm eager to see what happens with those because it's a, it's a great option, and the way they're made with having that foam core in the center. Mm -hmm. There's this, you know, they have a little bit more oomph to them than just plain old, like, you know, cereal box style cardboard. Right. Uh, so that's something where I'm eager to see what happens with those. I'm going to jump over to painting my cape now because I pretty much painted all that can be painted brown, brown for this little fellow. Oh, I went cape so. first. <laughs> hmm? I went cape first. You went cape first? That's totally fine. So I'm going to go. It's basically, it's a light blue color. This is electric blue, I'm believing. Yes, electric blue. How sad is it that I already know the paint before I looked the name? <laughs> So I'm going to jump in with electric blue, which is just like a nice sky blue. So if you are at home, you're playing the game at home and you don't have a light blue, that's why you would need the white paint. So you can go in and add that to your blue and get more of a light blue. I just saw the everyone has a favorite child. They just don't like to admit it comment. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said it. It wasn't me. No, it was me. Okay. No, that, that was Joe. That was Joe. Um, no, it Joe, was Joe. However, I know. Joe, I was trying to give you. Some... Joe has two. Try children. not to call you out there, Joe. <laughs> so, Joe, you have two kids. Which one is the favorite? Uh, da, da, da. Don't say it. Don't say it. I don't like to don't admit. Don't go there, Joe. <laughs> I don't like to admit. It. Don't do it. It depends on the day of the week. <laughs> so it's Monday. That means it's yeah. kid. Enchanted blue. Yeah. Well, let's see. Are you guys going to dark blue or a light blue on this cape? I'm going a light one because I know I'm going to put a wash over that's going to darken it up just okay. a little bit. That's a good thought. Yeah, I'm going to go with this enchanted blue. I like the name, enchanted blue. Yeah, this is a good one. Enchanted blue. It sounds like a cologne. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what is that you have on? Oh, it's enchanted. Enchanted blue, blue. <laughs> yeah. as opposed enchanted to curse. Blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cursed blue. Oh, this is actually cursed blue. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the uh, idea of on like you know Facebook Marketplace if you're selling something, just in brackets at the end, put not cursed. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it's not cursed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so many people are like, why did you put that it? it's not cursed? Like, well, because it isn't. You know. It it's not <laughs> upfront advertising we're making yeah. sure you know the whole product yeah. right from the beginning nothing suspicious at all <laughs> not at all everything is fully up and up now whiskers definitely has a bunch yeah. of um cool new things coming out i mean i'm going to be doing the unboxing of the eye in hand of vecton i'm looking up because i have it up there right now uh cool yeah it's cool yeah that's and... pretty sweet yeah we do um we would we're currently so in our club. We're currently playing a uh, Frost Maiden game, mm -hmm. um, and we play that once a month. That's not it's not streamed or anything like, else like that. But we're using it as a kind of a play test, and that way we will be doing the Beedling Grim, the Platinum Box mm -hmm. will be will be uh, that will be a live stream at some point. 
That makes so sense, yeah. We're looking forward to, to doing that. But I, I, again, from getting into miniatures, and I, I love being in Grimm's maps. I've always been a fan of maps. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, me and Steve are both kind of fans of puzzles and making handouts and things. And when Beetle and Grimm came along, it was like, yes, this is it. This is what oh, I'm yeah, for. yeah, definitely. And then... Um, it's just been uh, it, it's it's been really nice actually just to kind of have those fantastic artifacts from Beetle and Grimm. It enhances things. It really yeah. does. But I think for me, for going having their maps and then wanted painted minis, whether it's pre-painted or my painted, I think the next uh-huh. the next the next step will be, you know, um, some kind of terrain element. But I was. From the from the choices that I've seen out there, um, mm-hmm. I like the look of that paper craft, especially because yeah. the, it's lightweight, easy storage, mm-hmm. and looks amazing. It really looks lovely. And I actually kept mine out. Oh, they're actually still out because I haven't gotten away to putting away those bits. But I had them out as like my holiday village. Yep. And I'm oh, like, you know, yeah, I just yeah, got this so, fun little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, why not? I'm yeah. just gonna leave them out because they're cute looking. When I put them yeah. down, because it was that was actually like didn't intentionally mean to. I just set it down on the table, and there were some other Christmas things around them. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that'll work. And then it was tempting to get the Icewind Dale miniatures out too, but that's a different story. <laughs> so where where you um, where you work at WizKids? You work in um, the marketing. I do PR and marketing. Yep. Do you do? So... Is there anything mm-hmm. that have you, have you had any ideas of your own that says I I want to make like a boat or or you already done a boat as whiz kids but want to make something that they haven't done like a windmill or something where it's your design do you do um, you know you come up with that idea that design and then someone else goes off to build it have you I have not had that situation crop no. up no. <laughs> Um, oh, I've definitely made my own terrain though. Absolutely. Yeah. In the past, but nothing where it's like, Hey, I made this. Let's, let's try and get this to actually be a thing now. Yeah. My phone just, my phone battery just died. Uh Oh, (laughs) Uh oh. but there are definitely some, you know, really talented designers who are tasked with coming up with concepts and pulling things together and everything like that. So it's fun to see what they together and create I mean like even going on like you know some terrain I'm on, I'm on a couple of terrain Facebook groups and subreddits and mm-hmm. things some of the stuff people make is just oh yeah insane. yeah I enjoy making terrain yeah especially when you keep all your sprues and like I'm gonna try that I'm gonna keep mm-hmm. all the sprues and melt them down you know not, you don't even have to melt them down. You could make like um, like a goblin encampment quite easily mm-hmm. with, with just stacking them up and making yeah, them all. Yeah, you can. It's yep. all like hodgepodge style buildings and things. Very true. Look. I'm just readjusting the cameras because we've lost. Yeah, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I had it plugged yes. into my laptop. My laptop's obviously not giving out enough battery in comparison oh, to what being yes. used. Zoom definitely sucks up battery big time. Okay, so I have the blue painted onto the cape. I'm working around, getting into the little details where I can. Oh, um, I'm assuming that's uh, Sean, Brainbee Studios. Uh, Brainbee, so, yeah, that's uh, Sean Sunday. Yeah, so he said he's making a lot of paper craft terrain at the moment as well. Oh, fun. Hey, Sean, how you doing? How is tomorrow? How is breakfast? How is tomorrow? Sean, Sunday is <laughs> yes. in Australia. Wait. <laughs> For him, it's yeah, Tuesday. That makes sense. I'm like, are we time he's... traveling? What just happened here? Yeah, he's from the future. Ah, I love it. That for me is the fun thing because I interact with people from all over the world. So there are certain times where I know my notifications are going out and it's certain time zones. Yeah. So it's like my early morning, like my 8 a.m. notifications, like, okay, this is Europe. <laughs> this is my European influencers. And then, you know, around 10 o'clock, more comes in because that's, you know, East Coast. 
And then for some reason, my West coast people, it's usually around three o'clock their time because it's around six o'clock. My phone just starts going crazy. Like it's just notification after notification. It gets to be chaotic. You're just like, okay. Yeah. So we have a couple from Australia and that's like, we talk to each other via email. Like it's very rare. We get to catch each other about the same time. I think for, for where we are in the UK, it's been quite okay. I mean, I tend to work on Badger stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, it used to be Mondays. Uh, Mondays till from 9, to, 9 p.m. till midnight. I'll work mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on Badger-related productions and games and things. And to, again, talking mm -hmm. um, to companies and people and players and guests all around the world is has been amazing again we're in yeah. the uk is in the national lockdown and everyone is needing to talk at the moment mm -hmm. um and it's kind of another reason for, for doing the painting stuff it's just a kind of yeah it's a bit more relaxing than the game yep yeah you got more time to actually sit and have a chat rather than constantly thinking about right what your character's doing and stuff and for, the, for those of you uh, watching who are kind of Badger reg regulars, thank you for joining us. Mm. Um, yeah, we have we have more stuff coming soon as well. It, we've got more more new shows. We have um, lots of new ideas to 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 tease. That's what I'm going to say. It's to tease. Um, so please stay tuned. Same Badger time. Same. Badger time. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that's the way to do it. Uh, we've already Ooh. released info about a couple of them, haven't we? Yeah, Shiny Mud Kip Master. Thank you very much for following. Nice. Ooh. Great name as well, Shiny Mud. I was going to say, that's another that's another good name. Pokemon. Is it a Pokemon? Yeah, Mud Kip. I don't know. <laughs> you say that yeah. like I know. I don't know Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mud Kip. No. Uh, what? For the fur, I'm actually going to use like a very light gray. I'm not going to make it pure white. I'm going to jump over that since I just got my blue painted on. And some of you may notice that I tipped my miniature off of the blue tack so I can get underneath the cape a little bit more easily. That's why I like using the blue tack. Oh, yeah, I didn't even find to that, paint yeah. the side. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to like move your miniature literally off its base holder thing to get to some of the angles too, just because it likes to be finicky like that. So I'm going to, let me see here. Do I have a gray? Yes, I have wolf gray. Wolf gray will be perfect. But basically if you are at home and you don't have these paints, just mix a little bit of black into your white to get a light gray going. I'm gonna do the fur edging on this now. And I'm looking at the time. So we're getting to 15 to, let's yep. see, 11 your time. Am I doing the mapping? Yep. Last 15 minutes. Okay. Um, would you paint the swords black before you put the... Um... If, actually, yes, you can paint your swords black. And the reason you would paint your swords black first before putting a metallic on is because it gives you a deeper, richer tone to your metallics when you do that, especially with silvers. You can actually have fun too with changing the tone of your metallics by giving it a different base color. It's kind of hard to see, but I did kind of a blue <clears throat> over that mm -hmm. brown. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not. It's it's really hard to see on this camera, but it, it looks actually really cool. It's um, that way the cape still kind of looks a little bit brown, but the blue mm -hmm. kind of shines. It's almost like it gives it kind of a magic, sort of enchanted cloak. Ooh. Kind of that enchanted blue, you know? I like that. <laughs> I wish it showed up a little bit better. I don't know. I have to figure that out maybe if I do this again, how to get it to show up a little bit better yeah you can always play around with the thickness of your paint depending on how you're layering it so if you make it a thinner paint on top of the other color your bottom color will play through better yeah and the hard part with gray is that i am painting it does not look like i am painting trust me it's happening it's a thing Do, 
do, do, do, do. Oh, I just realized I was holding my breath. <laughs> uh huh. Breathe. Remember, yeah, breathe. breathe. <laughs> no, <laughs> in frame, out of frame. Where did Dave go? <laughs> Go on. Let's see what happened um, today. I'm I'm gonna try this painting the weapons black. Um because mm -hmm. this in this intrigued me quite a lot. I saw this on a on a different video, not one of these. Um mm -hmm. and I was like, why? And the, the video didn't actually tell me. They didn't say this is why you should do it. And I was like, well why? And there's your why. It helps with the yep. color. In fact, if you're gonna paint yours you're gonna paint yours black. I'm gonna paint mine purple so you can see what happens. Cool. Because that's another it, one I like to use on weapons sometimes. Another, another um, idea mm -hmm. that I thought of, which I, I think other people have, have done it as well, is hero minis. When you you, you know you find your representation, like my ranger, for example, find my ranger, mm -hmm. and um. I want to to paint them or for paint them for my DM. What I've had with in other games is the DM will paint all of them like in bronze, like their statues, mm -hmm. like you know uh, Monopoly pieces. So everyone is uniform, but everyone is unique because mm -hmm. everyone is a different shape. Right. And from us playing online, we want to get back to be. So I've got Vorpal board. I want to get back to using miniatures online. Because mm -hmm. at the moment we're using uh, digital tokens. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered, is that a nice, you know, is that a nice way to do it? So that rather than having, okay, you're blue, you're red, you're yellow, you're green, is to do these kind of statues. And then I guess you'd kind of dip them in a wash or paint a yep. wash on them or something. Yep. Good you could definition. even give them each a different wash so they look even more unique from each other if you wanted to. It's another viable option. You could paint them all like a goldish color and then do yeah. different washes. You could do a black wash on one and the brown on another and a more sepia toned on another. And it just sort of changes the look of each mini. So they have a different look. You can even do like a blue and then you get like a patina almost effect on it. Yeah. Like a greenish blue, which is a lot of fun to do. Okay. So I'm going to do this purple just so you can see the fun of when you do this to metallics. Of course, let me shake it out first. Hmm. There we go. Sometimes the color doesn't want to come out. Oh, and the purple I'm using for those playing the home game is heavy violet. And this is a spur of the moment thing. You don't have to do purple weapons. I could even do one purple and one black. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah, I'll do that so you can see the difference when you do a different tone underneath your silver. Steve's very quiet. Are you yep. are you just completely on mute, Steve? Are you really in that in the zone? Steve is in the zone. <laughs> I, I, I was. I did say something a minute ago because I'd started to paint yeah. my weapon silver, and then after about thirty seconds after I'd started, Joe mentioned about painting it black. It's like I want to stop yep. doing that and then go back to doing the, the fur lining and the cloak <laughs> instead. So I was waiting for one of you to do the weapon first, so I could see what the result was. Oh uh, well, I'll be done momentarily. Okay, we are in the last ten minute countdown. Okay. If you hear that grumbling, that is my stomach, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a monster underneath the table. Or maybe I do. So uh, for everyone who's watching, everyone in the audience, thank you very much once again for staying with us. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, Once we get to the, uh, the last sort of 10 minutes, we will be judged V. Uh, we'll get to pick an overall winner, and that person will get bragging rights mm -hmm. for, for quite a while. They will stack to every episode. Uh, Josh will pick the runner-up, so then we have a clear loser. Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. And I yeah. love how you, you have more you, pressure. I, 
Yeah, I get to pick the winner. You get you get to pick. Yeah, I basically get to like vote off the island, like uh-huh. you know. Yeah. You decide who Thanks. doesn't get the rose. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing, right? Well, some of this decision might come into who's a current DM for me right now. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah, you gotta remember, you gotta remember whose campaign you're playing on, soon, mate. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh man, this is this is not fair. <laughs> How much do you like your bard? Is you, you know, is, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, does, you know, I'm in charge of bookings, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is so wrong. <laughs> Josh, Josh I, I won't, I won't give you a hard time. Okay, you, 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 vote, hey, you play the you nice card. Whichever, yeah. You vote whichever way you, you truly believe. Uh-huh. Is, we'll yeah. we'll uh-huh. make it. We'll make it. Sl- I don't know. Should we? Should, is it slightly easy? I'm not sure. Shall we also? Open it up to a public vote. I think we should. I think we should, you know, because one of the things I think that some of this is going to come down to, I mean, if we were in person, I, I think it would be easier to like say, okay, this one is tighter than this other one. Or right. it's kind of hard to see like just yeah. on camera on, on, on video. Like, so yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be a tough call as well. Okay, so uh, audience, if you would like to, yeah, uh, please help me. Please help me here. Please help me. Josh, we, will, <laughs> we will we will set up a public vote, a little poll for for whoever the two runners up are, which is likely going to be you know Steve or Joe. But, uh, <laughs> let's let's Ouch. get in early. Well, right. 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 Let's <laughs> see. Uh-huh. I wish I could finish this before before submitting it. <laughs> Um, yeah, this, this is probably point. probably like a two and a half hour, really. But again, this is a part that we can learn from, mm-hmm. from this. We can um, we can see. Yep. Okay, since I have blackout, I am going to quickly dot the eyes. I don't know because we we obviously painted the green on the other two goblins as well beforehand. Yeah, so I think we, if we had just picked the one mini, we probably would have been good. We'd have possibly been on the wash stage yeah. by now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. So maybe just focusing on a mini at a time type of situation. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was the elementals and models such as those. Mm-hmm. That's all the clear plastic. Yes. How do you paint those? Does it mainly with we'll, a wash? Or... We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find yeah, out in the future gonna... episode, Joe. Yep. Okay. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> oh, it's oh, funny you do ask because I did do a stream on WizKids YouTube channel with the Magic the Gathering Ghost Council because they're all clear plastic and there's definitely there's different styles of inks and washes that you can put to use okay. as well mm, the as Ghost paint. Council, my favorite. I, I think I it's saw a that on Josh's video actually. Yeah, I love yeah. the Ghost Council. It's a killer council. I'm really pleased with them. That was my favorite piece. Mm-hmm. That's a good one for sure. Okay, got his little eyes all black now. And now... I'm using a mithril silver on this. Ooh. I think uh, I'm using it as well. Yeah, so I'm it's uh, got a little bit of metallic... I'm, I'm going for gunmetal. Ooh, that's nice. Gun nice choice. Yeah. Nice okay, so taking the gunmetal. Did we ever get to what your favorite mini was? Uh, mine? Yeah. I think we did, yeah. Yeah, you said the dragons, didn't you? Oh, that's it. The mm-hmm. dragons. Yep, the, the adult black for Pathfinder and the Chardolin. Chardolin. And I'm it, hearing it said so many different ways now. My brain's like, wait, which one? <laughs> um, that Have one you... for sure. Because that's that's the um, is that the pre-painted or did you did you also those are pre-painted? Um, oh, you mean unpainted? What are my favorites have been? Yeah, what 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 you have painted? What, what's one? Of your I favorites? honestly, I enjoyed my uh, rainbow gradient beholder. Wow. Yeah. A rainbow. Uh, he was a yeah. Uh, started off as red at the stalks, bled down into oranges to yellows to bright green to light blue into the normal blue into the purple into the violet and you did that by hand yeah wow yep 
I want to say it's on my Instagram for anyone curious, which is at underscore the underscore crafting muse underscore muse underscore because the crafting muse was already taken. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it should be on my Instagram account. I did it about a year ago, a year and a half ago. I've always wanted to do a uh, kind of a rainbow um, beholder. That would be cool. I think that's a cool. It's look. fun. I've, it I've was... seen a, I've seen a few of them out there like that. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun to do it that way, just because, I mean, well, plus you're supposed to, they kind of are their own unique creatures in and of themselves anyways. So it sort of steers into the lore behind them. And it's not I just, saw, you know. One of the things I've seen on, um, we were talking about it again, talking about it before we went live, uh, is Ray. Uh, Ray, who is uh, got DM. Um, mm -hmm. He... One of the things I, I saw him on Instagram, and then I saw this model that he did, which was some kind of frozen castle <clears throat> entrance, like with a, mm -hmm. a not full color, a drawbridge, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he used either the behold, beholder miniature or the zombie beholder yes. miniature, and yes. he used it as like stonework. Mm -hmm. And then there was frozen water coming out of its mouth, and I just thought it was amazing. Oh yeah, because I, I, you know, I didn't even think about using minis in, in in that way um, mm -hmm. oh i've done that yeah it's fun to sort of um take in piecemeal yeah. and give them a different spin i mean there are ones that i've turned into statues instead of having them painted up as pcs type of thing yeah that's that's kind of what i meant earlier about having playing yeah. pieces on on the board yeah and then rather than um as a dm i i would I encourage my players to have minis, but if they if they mm -hmm. don't, then if I do the same, um, you know, if I could turn them all into statues or something, yeah. or monopoly yep. pieces, I think that would just look amazing on the table. Mm -hmm. So here is the difference between having the black underneath. You can see it gives it more of like an aged look to the metal. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is with purple underneath, mm. which gives you more of like a shiny new look to the metal so it lets the metallic play through more so that's why you can have some fun with what you put underneath it and i just did a straight i just put mine right on there yeah so it's you can see it's like real shiny yeah exactly i've just been trying to do the belt buckle but um that's what i was just about to jump onto is the belt buckle and the little piece on the cape and we still gotta get to the teeth what I generally like to do is put it right on there and make it um, more shiny. And then I like to come mm -hmm. back with like a wash and mm -hmm. sort of, you know, age it up with, yep. a, with a wash. Uh, sometimes it turns out good. Sometimes not so good. <laughs> you got to be careful. I, yeah, I, I found that when I first started out, I would just take the wash and just put it all over the sword. And it's like, mm. yeah, it, it looks good. But I mean, right. you really have to, I, I found that like you have to control that wash around mm -hmm. along the edge right mm -hmm. on the edge of the blade, like in the little divots and whatnot. And it, it just yeah. comes out looking a lot, a lot tighter, a lot better. It does. It definitely changes things up a little bit. Just got to make um, sure it doesn't pull. Exactly. Yeah. You got to go, you got to go light and you got to keep, keep brushing. Yeah. yeah. And I, and that's kind of the magic to, to, I don't know if we'll get to that today, but that, that's kind of the mag the magic to the washing is. Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm actually once, yeah, once a wash goes yeah. on this, I mean, all the co like all every detail, like everything, just starts oh. ex to explode and pop, mm -hmm. and and like yep. the little mistakes, like just sort of disappear, and everything just looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna see if I can get myself to that point so people can see that. Yeah, I find the that there's like a stage when you're painting where you're like, this looks awful, and then. You, mm -hmm. put, you put a wash on it and you like, highlight oh. it and you're like, oh, actually, yeah. it's really good now. So yeah, 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 yeah. You put, a <laughs> you put a wash on and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like... I mean, some people jokingly call it liquid talent for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm actually going to have to pull this guy out from under the camera. Uh, we have just lost sound. I am momentarily fix it. Stay tuned, Radio Dave. And we'll get this going again in a minute. And um, what we're gonna do, oh, also for everyone in the audience, uh, we have a giveaway, which is uh, coming soon. 
Yeah. Go. Everyone is back. We're good? We are good. Okay. So I am going to... My little guy's pretty much mostly painted up. A wraith bone. And one little trick that I will do if I want to do like a quick and dirty dry brush. Because I've pulled it out already. Uh, and this is kind of what gives it more of like almost a sketchbook-esque look, which I tend to like with my miniatures. If you see how I paint minis, I like to kind of give them more of a from the pages as opposed to uber realistic. So since I have bone white out, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of bone white onto a very large flat brush like this one. And I'm just gonna load some of the paint onto a paper towel and get it so it's mostly off my brush actually. You can see right there, pull the good amount of the paint off. And then I will just go through and quickly and very lightly hit the higher points just to kind of get the details to play out more. Especially here on the brown area. So I'm just doing this on the brown. Washing and dry brushing are like magic. Yeah. Like literally when I first started, I would just, <clears throat> I would just base them with like mm -hmm. a, um, like a wraith bone or any type of lighter, like bone color. And then I would yeah. just, and then I would just wash them and dry brush mm -hmm. them. And yeah. literally that just there, those techniques, it, you, you kind of start to get a little bit out of confidence. Like, Oh, this looks really good. Like this is yeah. really good. And then you can go back and be like, all right, now I'll start doing more of the detailed painting and I'll put more colors on and, Mm -hmm. um, but washing and, and dry brushing just amazing the the amount yeah. of detail that you can pull out and accomplish with just those techniques and they're both very easy techniques yeah mm -hmm. i'm even doing it just a little bit on the face yeah. too like look at that look how amazing like all those details are popping now yeah how awesome that looks and because i know i'm going to go back in with my wash it's going to do a really cool color translation for it but this is what I'll do when I want to do like a quick dry brush. I'll just take the one bone white and go through and hit the whole mini. And I'll deal with the base later because I want to have some fun with the base too. So that is with the dry brushing on it. You can see this all pops out more. And now I'm going to, that's a problem. I will also sit here and keep dry brushing. I'm going to jump over to doing an umber wash on it. So let me find my umber. Is this the umber? Yes, this is the umber wash. So it's just a basic brown wash. I'm not going to go into black because the black is going to mute things more than I want it to be muted. <laughs> it's the giveaway for your painted minis. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's an idea now. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take my wash. That's not, Mr. Chelly, that's not a bad idea, apart from I want to keep them. <laughs> I was going to say, if I give them away, then I've got nothing to kill my players with. <laughs> if you ever want to test your wash to see how it's going to react, use the back of your hand. And you can see it falls into the grooves. If everything got to be opaqued out, then I know it was too thick of a wash and I'd have to thin it. This one is just right. So I'm going to start from the top. And this is just applying the umber. And a little goes a very, very long way. And I just use an old junky frayed up brush for this. There's no need to be precious about having a super nice brush for your washes. Mm -hmm. Never throw away junky old brushes. Just say don't drink your brushes. Oh no, I said don't throw away janky oh, brushes. That's I was like, well, you shouldn't drink the water, though it happens sometimes. Yep. <laughs> Joe's like, yep. <laughs> and they are done that, yeah. Where your uh, cup of tea is suddenly yeah, becomes say, yeah. <laughs> dip your brush in your cup of tea or <laughs> like that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. Uh, and great. <laughs> yep. It's a thing. It um, to everyone watching, 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little kind of new show. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be doing the so once V is kind of uh, wrapped up on that bit, we'll be doing the judging and get down yes. to, to business, um, and then we pick a winner. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Painting some more Pathfinder minis. Excellent. So that just goes to quickly show. So just doing a quick little dry brush and then a wash over it. It helps the details pop out a little bit more. It just looks, I mean, I'm painting the same mini, but it's like, it's like you got a better mini than I did. <laughs> 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 we've got different cuts yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. these are different ones aren't they mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, like, you've got the super deluxe one practice. I got the one at the Christmas cracker <laughs> <laughs> not kind of yeah. let me adjust my lighting is shifted again because it's getting to be dark out now so let me just there we go so see, it just kind of brings out the details a little bit more, and then I'll just go and I'll paint the base and do that. So that's kind of how you can do a quick and get it done type of approach. Get your base color on and then jump in for once you get all your details on there, just do a very light, light dry brush with uh, like an ivory tone. And cool. just very carefully and lightly go over across the top portions of the surface, and then you do your wash, and then you just let it dry. And seal it up and you'll be good to go and pop it on the table and ta-da! Obviously I'll do the base later, but that gives you the idea of things. And of course right now it's a little bit glaring because of the wash on it, but mm -hmm. you get a sense of as it starts to dry, you can see through here how the details just sort of shift and pop out more. So uh, just go over the wash again. Do you brush the wash on or because I've seen yep. people dip into washes oh, as well. Oh, dip and wash are two different things. Mm -hmm. dip, oh, and okay. wash. dip actually, it's, it's a higher concentration of the wash and you're, you're really saturating it. And then you have to make sure you're moving the dip, like the media around and it's not collecting and pooling. And I actually, I'm not a fan of the dip. It is yeah. great for things like if you have an army of skeletons that you want to get done. Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, see, uh, uh, Joe uh, knows uh, what uh, this is about. <laughs> He's got the head nod going. Yeah, um, if you have like skeletons or that type of thing, it's like you're gonna prank and turn them over. Batch painting 90 necron warrior. Yep, yep, exactly. There are some things that works well for, but for something like this, I wouldn't do a dip approach because it's gonna obliterate a lot of the color and everything and mute it down big time, which I wouldn't want to do with the goblin skin. Okay, so let's. But we yep. are gonna wrap up now so we can vote. Vote. Uh, what we'll do is. Uh, you have until I finish talking, guys. And what we're going to do is we'll put everyone on the big screen as big as possible. So we'll pin everyone's minis. They can just kind of do a rotation and show them. And then V can judge. Now, V is only going to be mm -hmm. judging uh, myself, Joe, right. and Steve. Right. And then Josh, with the, possibly with the help of the public vote, if we can get it up and running in time, we'll pick a runner-up. Okay. Oh, Turn my phone dun, on because it's got dun, a better dun. camera. <laughs> <laughs> I want the good camera. So let's yeah, let's good see camera. what we can do. My good side. So we'll give Joe a little bit more time just to plug his camera in. Steve, okay. are you ready? Nope. Nope. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> just say no. <laughs> He's still painting. <laughs> right. Let's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I need to start to focus now. I'm like, I'm like still obsessed with like, ah, let well, I tell you what, trying to... let's, let's, I was let's... doing the eyes, I was doing the eyes. I'm let's done. Run, I'm the, done. run the comp, run the we'll... comp, and then, and then yeah, we'll... We'll, yeah. we'll run the comp. The players, <laughs> there you go, get the competition. Get Hi, little right. one. So, no, we do, we're, we'll, what we do, Steve, we need you on a computer. You ready? Uh, yeah, but I've got to go around the other side of the table. So, um, yes, <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind me stepping away from the camera, I will go and set up the competition. Yeah, you're not uh, on the camera. And then we so... can do it, yeah. Josh, it keeps stalling Steve like... for us. Cheers. Well, I can't be painting if I'm doing the playing competition, so I'm, there's no, no excuse in there. Right, I'm going offline, so you can abuse me as much as you like. Josh. All right. Josh. I'll What's say that? it to your face, don't worry. Uh -huh. It's the Christmas special all over again. Josh. <laughs> it is. Right. Would you like to uh, uh, once again introduce what the giveaway is? I will put pin your camera. Yeah. Yeah, so, so have giveaway for this evening, folks, is going to be a standard booster Pathfinder Battles Darklands Rising, releasing February the 3rd. 
Uh, these are the pre-painted plastic miniatures, so they all come fantastically pre-painted. And not oh, that one. Not that one. <laughs> not you're, not getting, you're not. You're not getting that one. Okay. That, that, that one. was a different story. Um, but uh, you know, I have to say, I, you know, just a little shout out for Wiz Kids. Like every one of these sets that continue to come out, they get better and better and better with the with the layering of the paint, with the quality of the paint. And this set is just absolutely fantastic. So um, you can get your hands on one of these booster boxes for the win yep. for tonight. And all of mine are pretty heavy. So they're going to have some pretty awesome. Uh, I think that the the bigger miniature that's in there is probably going to be a pretty good one. And you do get one of the kind of, I'll just say larger, one mm -hmm. kind of larger miniature and then three uh, smaller miniatures. Is yeah, what you're it's actually, find. it's a double pull. You have two different options. You get a pull where it's going to be uh, two larges and then smaller medium, two of smaller medium. And then you have a huge one and smaller mediums, three of them. Kind awesome. of changed it up a little bit. So you have two options now with what you could be possibly getting in your pulls. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, so we need a. I love this chunky. Uh, be the keyword. We need a keyword. Let's call it. Uh, let's do it to keep it simple. Let's say rising. So, Steve, hopefully you still got your headset on and you can hear me. I've, I've just put it back on. So, it's rising, yeah? Yep. So, the keyword is rising. Let us know when it's ready, Steve. Okay. It's ready. Go okay. for it. So, it's exclamation mark <laughs> rising into live chat to win one of these mystery boxes. So, go for that. <laughs> I like how Mary's like, have a parent child. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Mary is exclamation mark rising to be in a chance with one of these mystery boxes. Now, we'll pull the winner, but first we're going to rotate. Josh, as you're first up, let's see your mini. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, okay. The other, the you, just get to, you don't get judged. You, you get to share. Okay. I'll, I'll pin you um, on. I, I... I'll pin you on my phone. Okay. I, I, uh, I didn't get to the dry brushing or, or washing. That's um, I don't know that everybody did that or not, but no. uh, I just got all the, all the paint on. Um, is it pinned up there? Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pinned. People will, it will catch up okay. in a minute. Try that. Mm, where's the link? Yeah. I'm going to turn it a It's looking good because your, your cape yeah. is happy. My cape is messy compared to yours, so that's kind of. Uh, and I don't have the pupils on the eyes either, so that probably looks a little yeah, funny. Yeah, okay. I don't, the, I don't have the pupils yeah. yet for the eyes. Uh, I think you can see there. Things, yeah. yeah, you can see there on the cape. Kind of what I was talking about. Actually, that that's mm -hmm. showing up pretty good there with the larger one. Um, you can see kind of how that brown. I wanted it to show through that blue a little bit. Yes. Yep. And I went with a little bit of a lighter fur because once I wash it, I wanted it to take it, on a little kind yep. of a dirty kind of look. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to get this washed and, and dry brushed and then get the pupils on the eyes. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to look pretty good. Yeah, oh, that's Dave where everything went. Yay, Hey, Dave! <laughs> so, B yep. Dave, I, I, I'm... Still want your yeah. ruler. Well, like um, <laughs> like Ryan's, Ryan just said, when are you going to come play with the badges? Please you. Yeah. You've been spotted. <laughs> uh, I've been, we, yeah. me and B-Dave have been tweeting each other because he's also played or run uh, Rune Lords. So I've been, mm -hmm. I've been getting some advice. It's been good advice. It's been good advice. Oh, there you go. And I really like how that sword is nice and shiny. So that'll look cool mm -hmm. once it's... Uh... Definitely. Once it's, once it's washed to yep. bring out all that detail. All right. So, Joe, uh, you are Josh. Joe, you up for next? Are you ready? Yeah, I think. All right. Which one is your cam? Okay. Now there. that we're officially starting the judging, I, oh. I, I, I need to. I need to know. Did everybody get through dry brushing and washing? Not me. No, yep. I think I was the only one. Yo, you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, then. Okay, so wow. so jo so Joe's is dry brushed though. and I washed. I nothing. Okay. Okay. All right. This is okay. I remember. I don't have favorite children or minis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I gotta bring well, that a little bit. I gotta bring this down Point from up. the top from the top Point monitor so I can see it a little bit better. Okay. All right, Joe. That's looking good, Joe. It's looking good. Yeah, like the, uh, you can twist it around on the hand as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the dry brushing really, really mm -hmm. picked up on that, that hood mm -hmm. and that uh, that that cape there. Really looks yeah. nice. 
That is excellent. What? You definitely picked up and look at the texture in the cape that's showing yeah. through with the folds. Ooh, like those eyes. His eyes are tight Ooh. with that red. Ooh. Yep. Ooh, man, the washing Ooh, is copycat. You've done red really? eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's well, got I mean, red eyes in the. I would have done red eyes, but I think I think my green. I didn't do red eyes just because I was too lazy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't notice they were red in the sheet. I just thought I'd do red eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, red right. looks the red looks good. Uh huh. So the I, washing, I like the washing makes a huge difference, it right? Does. All mm -hmm. that detail has yep. now come out. It's just kind of exploding at this point. It's yeah. you know, it's kind of a move to the head of the class technique. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been upgraded. Ooh. Um, Central win right. Oof. Let's move on. Oof. Yeah, so, and Joe, Joe, how'd you, like how'd, you, how'd you do your swords? Is it was it black uh, undertone yes. or black, black with a uh, lead belt So yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Was that was that ice and sugar on top with a little bit of yeah, right. <laughs> the edges. It looks it's good. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, yep. Steve, you're up next. All right. Let me pin your. Here right, we go. Steve. Here you go. Yeah. You are so what you got? upside down, but we'll go for it. We've got to get you to yeah, focus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's getting me to stretch my neck, so that's good. Yeah, oh, here we Ooh, go. there we go. Oh, nice big oh, smile. Nice. Hey, look at that. You put your hand behind it, it's trying to focus on the paw. <laughs> branding, branding. I was... <laughs> right? <laughs> Brand's more important than the mini. <laughs> at that well, it looks like he's got a nice clear line on the cape. yeah 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 i was gonna say the cape's looking good there's no there's no paint on his hands though well i've got no paint on my hand i've got paint on my hand uh, uh, hello now. like i said my 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 thumb is always my palette <laughs> i don't know is it gonna be for sure there mm. uh, right there it's, it's kind of blurry there. yeah it's blurry yeah all right let me move my phone <laughs> Oh, we're gonna. Oh, it's getting serious. It's coming back to stage. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. We gotta make sure. We gotta make sure, all all sure all this is done right. You know, we're all like, oh, we'll just do it for like. Uh, we're just gonna do it for the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Hey, look. Okay, absolute yeah. beginner here. Bear that in mind. But look, that's what I want to see. Right, this Most is your first mini. person yeah. ever. Here we go. <laughs> Not only that, live painting as well. But look, the paint. I think. I think it's mm -hmm. a little bit messy. It is. Okay, hang um, on. Is this Dave? This is it. This is his first one ever. A little bit um, blobby. And that's thick, yes, thick but paint, thin your... paint, maybe. Mm. You could probably go a little bit thinner with your yeah. paint, just a little bit. So I, I maybe thin it out so you have that maple syrup consistency of your paints, like we yeah. talked about. He, he's yeah. green. I mean, he looks sweating. <laughs> he looks sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe there's a gloss to it, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to paint him because he was still wet, but. Um, what the bit I was impressed with is the belt buckle because I just I I was gonna just, say that yeah that, that is, that's for my best first bit. go yeah that's the best yeah that's nice that's my best bit I think. nicely done yeah. that's you know yeah um, and sometimes well, you know with those raised pieces right you can kind of come back at the end and just sort of just lightly brush over right and yep. it just it just picks up just the just that raised bit there. It is perfect yeah. right over the brown. That's nice and mm -hmm. tight. It looks good. Yeah, you did a great job on the belt but buckle. I tell you what, I will continue to paint him. I will finish him. I will yes, do the wash and eyes too. and teeth and yeah. everything. Um, just kind of get that in. But you can see, I mean, I was nervous. And I can see that in the brush strokes. You can see how much I've missed on the, on the floor, for example. But I'm actually quite impressed. As V said, if you hold it at arm's length, uh -huh. you, you don't mm -hmm. you don't see it so yeah these are yeah. these are playing pieces these are table pieces this yeah. is not competition winners it's by getting any there. Means. yeah yeah and here's here's the thing dave like what you're looking at right here right and this is your first one right yep yeah. it's awesome so here's yeah. here's the thing here's mm -hmm. the thing that little bit of blue that you got in the fur there boom you grab your you grab your lighter color you go right over it it's done over. it's gone it's yeah. fixed yep. right the second you hit this with a with a dry brush and a wash it's gonna it, it's gonna explode i mean you're, yeah. you're gonna be mm -hmm. like amazed with yourself when you hit this yeah. with your dry brush and then mm -hmm. you hit with your wash you're gonna be like oh my god i'm a miniature so, painter yeah. do you wash <laughs> this is great do you wash them you... brush or brush them wash i wash For them this, brush but that's just no. i always go well i always go because if you're doing what i did with the ivory toned paint trick you do the brush first then the wash because it'll pick up the color of the wash on your dry brushing 
Right. Um, if you're going to do it where you're going to go back in with similar tones for your dry brushing, so you're going to do a lighter brown, you're going to use a lighter blue, you're going to use the lighter green, then you can do it after the wash. Cool. So there's a little bit of nuance there. So if you're going to just do what I did with the ivory tone paint and just make sure it's a very light load on your brush that's like barely even there. Yeah. When you go and you brush it across the paper towel and just barely see that color get picked up and then you move it to your mini, you can do that and then you can do a brown wash on it. But you know what? And you'll get what I did. See, I was nervous at the start, but you know what? I'm actually quite, like, I want to keep painting. Okay. We'll finish the stream. Good. And I'll, I'll yeah. just keep painting, but I'm really, yeah. this is really cool. And the fact that we all kind of zoned out <laughs> halfway through this, uh -huh. we all kind of went into our little yep. painting zen. world. It was really, really painting cool. Painting zen. So there yes. you go. I, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right, let's go back to you Steve. Sh you should be. Uh, I enjoyed that. Steve, just see if you can get you in focus. I, I can't see from the other side of the room my computer screen, so is that in focus? <laughs> no. <laughs> Your paint tray is, though. <laughs> Your paint tray is lovely. <laughs> oh, oh, you got it. You got hey, it. there we go. Oh, there, there we go. go. No, it's coming in. Oh, it's oh. starting. It's almost Try like Try and a get hand. your hand, yeah. like, completely right behind. Now it's... Yeah, there. No. Oh, oh. It's getting no, closer. You can hold it still. <laughs> Almost. It looks like a happy oh, goblin. On. It does. Yeah. Quite a satisfied with itself goblin. Yeah. <laughs> so again, this is a kind of like a pilot episode. We are learning these things. It's Steve, the first time. Steve will have to get a new camera. <laughs> it's my phone. He's so. desperate. Yeah. He's desperate. <laughs> Please look at my mini. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it won't focus. It wants to focus on everything else but mini. What, so. what you have to do, Steve, is um, uh, is take take photos. Um, yes. So so everyone can see. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so attacking your that's, own that's to... not part of the collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I but I can I can see. I mean, it's got some nice tight yeah, detail. Like the eyes definitely. look really good. Mm -hmm. The uh, the buckle. Oh, there we go. The buckles focus, look good. The little silver bits yeah. look good. Yeah, that's mu that's much better. Yeah. Oh, now I can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's well done, Steve. Yeah. Okay, so. Judges, you have well V. You have. Just give me ten seconds mm. to go over your over your marks. You got to pick a winner. This is this is the uh, the star painter uh -huh. for for the first ever Great British brush off. <sighs> Here we go. Drum roll. Okay, I'm gonna is... have to go with Joe. <laughs> well done, Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done, Joe. You get the first uh, star painter. Um, well done. Well done. You're You're the just... gold star stamp. Yeah. Right there. there we go. Uh, well done. So, yeah. if Steve, you can sort out. I don't know, can we do a poll, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, back to your back go. to your computer. <laughs> Between you and me, go, Steve. Go you back. And me. Go on. <laughs> so. Uh, you, the audience, get to vote on the runner-up along with Josh. Now, you can either influence Josh. Josh probably has his own mind made up by now. Um, so, you, you this is your chance. It's between me and Steve. Who is and we're be... not allowed to vote, just we... so that I don't spend 32.7 oh. thousand like, channel points. <laughs> now yeah. cheating. Uh, ripping the vote, yeah. Yeah. We cannot I've vote. Got, like... I've got 27k's worth of channel points I could dump on this. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to because you're not allowed to vote. We, we have the rest of the season to go. Oops. I, I might get better. Yeah. I might get better. It was the cat. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Meow. Blame it on the cat. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Mav. Good to see you again. All right, it's going to be a one minute vote and it's up. Ooh. Who gets second place? Is it me or is it Steve? Uh, let's see here. And again, go go for uh, your uh, your favourites. <laughs> Minis, not people. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes that's kind of good. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> that could be a dangerous vote. Let's, <laughs> let's see who else we can uh, we can get on the show. <laughs> Believe me, I have I yeah. have no doubt I have lost because but it is um you will see me improve over the weeks. That's the whole point. Oh, Steve, exactly. Steve's taking the lead. Oh, Steve's really taking the lead now. Uh oh. Come on, eight, 18 people in. There's only five votes. So <laughs> oh, oh. the voting's at the top of the chat. Who gets second place? That, that, that is the thing. I mean, um, you know, we could we could debrief this and 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 understand why Joe was better. I mean, he obviously finished the exercise, and me and you didn't. Mm. He dry brushed. He washed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I was only I was only doing the wash whilst you were whilst you left. So yeah, I okay. literally only just about got the wash and dry brushing. Yeah, I was dry brushing whilst underwire. you guys were chatting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh, the result, the result, result is anyway. in. The result is in. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, the, the, the public have gone five two in favour of me. Well yeah. done, Steve. Congratulations. In favour of Steve. Sticking now that, I could maybe... I could technically override that. You could, you could. <laughs> judge's rule, but <laughs> probably wouldn't bode well. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let's go with it. Silver medal, silver medal to Steve. Mm -hmm. Well done, Steve. Yeah, it was it was it was well done, well Steve. Done. Yeah, but, in the face. Really but well good. done, everybody. I can That's honestly right. say, having taught many a painting class and many a pupil. Dave, you did a fantastic job for your first yeah. time out mm -hmm. of the gate. That's really good. That That's right. is fantastic. Especially like that belt buckle. Yeah. I am majorly impressed. I, I bought, so I that in of itself, of like stuff on Amazon, but... <laughs> <laughs> I bought loads I of paintbrushes. I used I think two. But yeah, there we go. Um, there you go. Yeah. I was yeah. Uh, quite well done. Impressed. Very well done. No, it, yeah, it was it was really good, Dave. It really yep. was. Absolutely. I'm excited right. to see what your last one looks like yeah. based upon what you just did with your first one, quite frankly. Yeah. And you know, you know what you should do on the Badgers channel? I think everybody should take pictures of their final miniature yes. and then, you know, kind of tag it with your name and put mm -hmm. it up there when you're all done with your dry mm -hmm. brushing and your washing and everything. So everybody can kind of see the final. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But I think you're That's really going to be impressed, Dave. Once you get yeah. through the whole process, you're going to be like, yeah. yep, I'm a miniature painter now. You are, you are a miniature painter now. You have yeah, <laughs> into the miniature. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That is um yeah. It was really good. I really enjoyed great it. Job. It was kind of you, very um It was really good. You did a great you all yeah. did a great job with like, you know, the fact it was like limited time, so it was sort yeah. of a speed painting session too. That yep. can very much change things up for the results and what you're doing. But yeah, go back afterwards and you can kind of fine tune and do those little extra details that you want to get in. You're gonna you're gonna very much uh see a change happen quickly because you're mm. getting those extra steps where that helps just that much more. I, I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. It was not, the one, again, the nerves and the pressure kind of come off after a while mm -hmm. and you're just having a mm -hmm. chat. So um, everyone watching, we'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> Dave's going to specialise in belt buckles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, why not? Why not? Um, Mate, that, could be the next, that could be the next merch item. <laughs> <just belt buckle>. <laughs> 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 you, never, you never know, you never know. So we will Ryan, 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 Ryan. There wasn't an option to vote for a cat. <laughs> we will be back in two weeks. Um, we'll let you know on socials um, what, what we've got painting, because we're going to change the painting every session. We're going to be doing this for a few sessions, so please do join us. Um, and paint along with us. Let us know. Send in your minis, uh, of your mini goblins, if you can get them, uh, and, and let us know how, how well you've done. Mm. Um, so, Joe, again, well done. First star there goes you go. to you, sir. And stay well done on thank you, the thank you. silver medal. So fantastic job, guys. V, thank you so it's, much for joining. It's... Thank you so much oh, for judging. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and we need to pick a winner. I was going to yes, say, we our winner. That's what I was and the winner to... is. Yeah, don't forget to <laughs> Yeah, keep keep going with a drum roll because I need to <laughs> across the <laughs> 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 I've, I've, uh, there's, there's, a, uh, there's loads of these minis are amazing, um, but there's there a couple go. that I'm oh, really Chavana. excited to paint. Congratulations. Yeah, Chavana. congrats, Chav Hunter. Oh, Chav Hunter. Chav Hunter. Chav Hunter for another win. Nice. <laughs> Not um, twice. Lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> lottery. Yeah. Cool. Well done, Chav. Yes, congrats. <laughs> Worthy winner. All right. Somebody record those details and send them to me, and then. Yep. Who, who have we got um, next next time for we, painting? 
We know. No, it's a surprise. We will, we will tell okay. you. Uh, we will find out. Uh, we will we will put the details out on social about uh, everything that's coming on, uh, who the judges are, and what we're painting. So you can come along and paint with us as well. We hope you like it. Give us a feedback, whether you did, didn't. Um, let us know on Twitter, feedback, Facebook, um, mm -hmm. everything. And we'll also mm -hmm. be putting this up onto YouTube uh, probably by the end of the week. So uh, we, nice. we've already had some, some good feedback already. So thank you very much. Again, yeah. uh, Josh McGuire, McGuire Review, thank you very much for the competition. Thank you very much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Good time, always. Fun. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good time, right. dude. We'll see you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. See ya. <laughs>